Hello chat, let us begin. Welcome back to A Slightly Twisted Female. I'm your host, Brittany Rue. Welcome back, friends, family, turban, lovers, fighters, patrons, and their handlers. We have so much to discuss. It's so good to see you all. Sorry for being late, but if you haven't been here, you should know that that's to be expected. Um, so yeah, holy fucking hell, I have been suspended on YouTube for the past week and my children had two snow days, so that's why I've been gone, but I'm back and ready to discuss. Um, so while I was suspended on the YouTubes, I spent a lot of my time in the dumpster fire that is Twitter and holy fucking hell, God bless anybody who like is predominantly on Twitter because what a fucking shit show that is. It is stressful and it is aggravating and very illuminating about some of our so-called feminist heroes and what they're up to. So while I was on during my suspension, like one of the first things that I saw was this little gem. Who do we have here? Sarah Summers, who is apparently a woman who was advocating for female-only uh, crisis centers, I guess, in the UK. You know, I'm a little more familiar with the American turban, you know, because I am an American myself. You can't tell by my accent. Um, but this is somebody who is filing some sort of a lawsuit to demand that, you know, I guess, what, crisis shelters, rape shelters, something of that sort uh, can be labeled as female only, which would mean to preclude male fetishists who wish to seek entry on the basis of an oh-so-extra-uber-duber-special gender identitarian. Um, no, that woman decided to post this photo of an event that happened in Brighton in the UK at a place called Sister Salon. Apparently the same Sister Salon who labels Kelly J. Keene as some sort of a right-wing fascist, which is so gross, but here we go. Sarah Summers writes, three esteemed guests at the at Sister Salon 2, time to talk event in Brighton tonight. Doc Stock, as you can see, I've been blocked by Kathleen Stuck, which is why it is not blue. Katie John and, oh, Bindle, J oh, damn, Julie must... Bindle J. She either like removed herself from the thing or she blocked me too. We'll have to look into that one. Great to have you here. Hashtag time to talk. Excellent. All right. So we got Kathleen Stock here in the bottom left looking, you know, a little bit smug. And then we have Julie Bindle, who's yet another academic feminist. Two women who have built their lives and legacies uh, kind of shaping the narrative, shaping the narrative around what feminism is and what it should stand for, and apparently are gender criticals. Now, who's the bloke in the middle with the terrible receding hairline uh, and the, the fetish gear behind us? Boy, well, that would be Katie John Wen. And as you can see, Twitter wants me to follow Katie John because he is one of my relevant people. Oh, that's relevant people. Yeah, not going to happen. Sir Spell, of course. Hold on. Speaker on, wait, fuck. All right. <laughs> Speaker on diversity, equity, and inclusion. Diver hashtag diversity. Hashtag dialogue. Hashtag mental health. Hashtag LGBTQ. Oh, so this isn't even like a dude that's like trying to pretend like he's gender critical, right? So he's just, okay, whatever. Hashtag furry, tag furry speech. Human library, UK, blah, blah, whatever the fuck. Okay, <laughs> bro. Uh, so of course, you know, this dude uh, was actually specifically invited. So here's a little background. Anyway, like I said, because I was off of YouTube, I had to go over to the shit show circus fest that is Twitter and hang out over there. And so this was like one of the first things I saw. And I literally, I caught it literally right when it was originally posted. And I was like, bro, again? <laughs> again? Anybody who hasn't already, go subscribe to uh, DC Isaac, uh, Caitlin. She's like a brand new, fresh out of the box YouTuber. Uh, but And she covered this. And literally, like she said it. And it was exactly my thoughts. I listened to her stream on this topic yesterday. And I was like, bro, again? And again, at this point, if you're going to post a picture like this, I have to assume that you're just drama farming. 
right? You're, you're farming for engagement and attention because man, what the actual fuck? We just learned our lesson with Jen Speck. We finally kind of like eked beyond that whole issue with the Phil Illy thing. So I feel like if you're doing this, you, you're just trying to drum up problems and people who do this sort of shit, like drum up problems for no real reason. I have to assume that you are trying to intentionally drain the, the energy the time, the emotional resources for women who you supposedly stand with fighting in this fight, right? So that you divert them from focusing on other issues and you create confusion, you create pain, you create, you know, and everybody's like, stop the infighting. Why don't we just stop the infighting? I can't take the in Bro, these people are the ones creating the infighting, okay? You know what you're doing. You're purposely trying to st stoke confusion and division. And, and everybody's like, oh, well, it's not, you know, Kathleen Stock and Julie Bindle's fault. They were just ambushed by the dude. Uh, no, Sarah Summers did come forward to say that she went and garnered permission from Kathleen Stock and Jewelry Bindle to post the photo. So yeah, maybe if it was like, you know, the dude hopped in and then I'd be like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not trying to get photographed with this fucking weirdo. And somebody was like, yeah, can I post this on the internet? I'd be like, absolutely not. And in fact, give me your phone so I can delete any possible evidence that this ever happened and get this dude away from me now, unless you like want to call security or like pick one because, you know, one of us has got to go. You feel me? So, and part of the issue was that Sister Salon has this event that happens. You know what? I'm not even going to re, re, re repeat myself. I had this conversation with Anna Slats. Uh, <clears throat> so anyway, so of course, while all this was going on and everybody's like, bro, what the fuck? Like, we just went through this with the whole Phil Illy thing. Like, are we really back here? Did nobody learn their lesson? And then what was it? Like, Eva Kirilova, who uh, I had no idea existed, but I was apparently following. Sometimes I'll follow people that like other people who I'm following follow, you know, because I'm like, oh, maybe this is someone I should know, you know, and apparently I was following her. I don't know whatever the fuck she is. The only reason that I know who she is is because she decided once again to hop in on this as an opportunity to drive her own engagement, which man, she was successful in doing, uh, and, and started to like, you know, drop photos of her and this dude who flayed his penis and shoved it up into his uh, pelvic canal and calls himself a transsexual woman. Um, and this whole like true trans thing, whatever. So and then she, you know, she decides to hop in and then I'm like, whoa, what the fuck is going on? Luckily, most normal people, it seems like UK, I'm not gonna, even though, all right, I give the UK and Turf Island, there's a reason we call it Turf Island. They very absolutely, very much spearheaded the initial sort of um, turf movement. You know, uh, I mean, we, we have had... We have had women as far back as the 70s, radical feminists in the US and in the UK speaking out about what they predicted, which was correct, was going to be this whole trans issue. And they have been talking about it for a long time. But I feel like the UK definitely gets credit for being the most organized and, and taking the most sort of like organized solidarity approach. Uh, and, and they really laid a, a strong blueprint for how to begin organizing against this. And I, I give them so much credit for that in no small part to people like Kelly J. Keene, Aja the Empress, Mr. Menno, uh, Magdalene Burns, you know, rest in peace, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And so, you know, and even like Ju Julie Bindle, who like literally like my second or third ever video was me responding to her and actually like, like disagreeing with her takes. It was it had to do with like marriage and stuff like that. But I've always thought that her takes were like really weird. And she has this like very pro-political les lesbian angle. Again, it's this idea that you can make the decision to be a lesbian, you know, based on your wanting to uh, live like a separatist lifestyle and show solidarity to women so you can 
you know, choose to, to be, to enter the lesbian lifestyle. So it's not really a far cry. If you think that lesbianism is something that you can sort of opt into to align with your, whether, whether it's your social or political goals to, to say that you can opt in as a woman into lesbianism, to say that some men can opt into lesbianism. So it's really not so far off base that we're seeing this from Julie Bindle. But Kathleen Stock, fuck, Kathleen Stock has me blocked. And I never screen, I got to start screenshot. I got to start getting better at screenshotting. So basically, I don't have it. Fuck, and I should have tried to get it. Um... Where is it? Whatever. So Kathleen Stock's response to a lot of women were like, oh, hey, like, what's going on? You know, really reasonable. Let's see. Uh, like Rose. Rose has been really, uh, Rose in my own fashion has been really vocal about this. And she wrote, uh, hold on for a second. <clears throat> She wrote, why are you platforming a man and woman face? Do you still not understand how these men hurt women? Valid thing to say. You know, uh, another disappointment. I see two sisters and one mister. Doc Stock looks uncomfortable. Does anyone else see it too? Um, let's see. And I think some men who identify as women are GC advocates. I disagree. But they still have no place at women-only events. None. So it was like. You know, a lot of really reasonable criticism. Everybody's like, why the dog pile, bro? It's like just because a lot of people can see the same thing for what it is doesn't mean it's the dog pile, okay? And like a dog pile is just like attacking somebody, you know, for like ad hominem, like no reasons, whatever. Um, and, and just doing it for the sake of doing it. All these women are expressing their own sincerely held criticisms about this, uh, you know, places, organization's decision to, to do this, to invite the, not, not only just, oh, they said, oh, they opened it up as a mixed sex, sex event this one time. And this dude did just happen to show up. He was an invitee in, in, he was invited. Invitee, is that a word? I don't know. Uh, Let's see. So, um, fuck, what was I talking about? Okay, so, yeah, so anyway, so then Doc Stock, Kathleen Stock, again, who has kind of, like, been held up as this, like, feminist hero who people have been giving, you know, tons of support to. Even the woman who posted it, this woman, Sarah Summers, I guess, had been, like, fundraising a shitload of money for her cause, so she's been... Having people send her money and then Doc Stock and Julie Bindle who write a bunch of books and they get paid to speak at events and people actually pay to hear these people speak. Who? I don't know, but apparently it happens. And it's like, um, you know, trans widows voices peeped in and was like, you know, you esteem a man who like many trans widows exes was outed to his wife when she discovered pictures of his cross dressing totally legitimate concerns and the reason why it's not like these are just two women who are kind of like adjacent to the gender critical movement these are women who are like were like esteemed as leaders you know and, and again say if this guy had just shown up and they didn't post the photo it would be no big deal but it was like what the what was the point of posting this guy's photo tagging them all in and then Doc Kathleen Stock is sitting there defending it and she told any any you know woman who uh, expressed like concerns about what's going on here. She told him to get stuffed, right? And this is from like a lesbian feminist academic telling other women to get stuffed, which means to get fucked. Like telling women to get fucked with a dick. So you're telling like lesbians to get fucked. You're telling uh. You know what I mean? And, and so it's like, it's already a misogynistic, like gross thing to say. And these are our feminist leaders. So then Eva decides to jump in and, and add her two cents. I hosted a whole space on it. You guys should check it out. I'm going to try to download it and get it onto the, uh, get it on here, uh, uh, my, my YouTube channel. Right. Okay. So that created the whole initial round of like shit show. And then let's see, then we have, um, Dun, da, da, da. let's see so then I had said so Eva jumped in and was like hey look I have I'm friends with this you know trans identified male like he he and it was really like childish the way that she did it. it wasn't just like hey you know some of us have friendships or whatever it was like she decided to take a bunch of pictures of her and her 
you know, male fetishist friend who I looked into him and my God, there are some issues there that we're going to go over because he's a whole bizarre thing. The, the, that duo has a whole bunch of other weird things about them that have been going on for a long time that I guess no one has called out. I don't know why, but we're going to do it today. Um, so, so I said something, you know, I was just like, basically like, you're really a clown for weaponizing this guy against women who are expressing legitimate concerns, women who you claim to represent, women who you've been given a platform to sort of speak for, uh, women who have looked up to you and who have supported you as, um, you know, somebody who they felt was carrying the torch and then just to kind of like spit in everyone's faces. And she made it very clear. Like somebody was like, Oh, so are you saying that you prioritize like this man over other, you know, lesbians? It's such a shame. Something like that. She blocked me. So I, I didn't get the screenshots, but she basically was like, prioritize my friend, my friendship with my friend over other random women who share my sexuality. You betcha. Like, I'm honestly, my take on Eva Kurilova, and as you'll see, me checking Eva created pro or Eva, Eva created problems between like me and uh, Anna Slats, which is not what I intended, but I've got to stand firm, you know, as much as I hate to drive any sort of a wedge between me and the women of Redux, but I guess Eva Curl or Ava, Eva, Eva, I'm sorry, I cannot, like if I call her Eva, like you guys are just going to have to forgive me because it is really hard to get my brain to like process that her name is actually pronounced Eva, um, like never Eva, you know, but like, so fucking whatever. Um, it was the way she like weaponized this guy. And then, and then of course, you know, plays victim and it's like, Oh, you know, people are trying to tell me who I'm allowed to be friends with, bro. No one gives a fuck that you're friends with this troon. Literally no one knew or said anything or gave a fuck until you decided to weaponize this dude against a bunch of women who had concerns about a clear AGP. She, you're defending this autogynophile and his right to basically infiltrate spaces where conversations are happening about the safeguarding of women and children. I don't want these dudes and their opinions or their needs to taint or have any influence on the way that we formulate uh, uh, you know, our strategy to take down gender ideology and to safeguard women and children. And I'm not sorry. I don't give a shit. And the second that you make it clear that you are going to prioritize your, you know, like personal and professional interests that, that are run counter to that goal, I'm going to call you out and I'm never going to support you. I'll know to sidestep you next time. You don't like it, bro, block me. Because I don't give a fuck. Because as I made it very clear, the only people in the world who I'm beholden to, and I, and I said this too when I was talking to uh, Anna, again, Anna, who I hold in a high regard, I'll say it 80 billion times, Genevieve Gluck, as I've said, pretty much fucking every other stream of my life is my shiro in this movement. To me, she's like the highest it gets in terms of women who I respect in this movement, you know? So it like kills me that I'm like driving a wedge between myself and them and the work that I think that they're doing that is so critical, but I'm sorry, you know? If it means that everybody in this movement doesn't fuck with me, if it means everyone blocks me and, oh, like Brit is real, you know, she's, she's hysterical, she's a Puritan, she's an extremist, then I guess that I am. I guess I am because it makes it real easy for me at the end of the day, as much as I would like to build relationships and like to maintain professional connections with people and personal connections with people in this fight at the end of the day, the only people who I'm truly beholden to in all of this are my two little girls, my two little boys, my four nieces, my two nephews, one who's in heaven, and I said this before, I'll fight for, I still fight for him regardless. As long as I'm doing right by them, then I'm exactly where I need to be. As long as I know that I can look them in their eyes and say that I am not compromising on what is best and what is right for you so that I can like be in with some fucking random group of, of people online, then I am exactly where I, I can lose any other relationship in the world for real, for real. 
So long as I'm doing right by my family and mostly right by those children, like I said, including my nieces and nephew, then I'm all good. I I'm right with God, right? I'm right with God and I'm right with the world, you know, because, and I really don't give a fuck at the end of the day. So it's like, you know, y'all can hate me. That's cool. Like I I'm with all of it. So, you know, like I said, um, so anyway, so there was this whole thing. All right. Let me see if I can, I want to, um, okay. All right. Okay. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So of course it's, so this is what I'd, I, it sucks cause she went and blocked me and I didn't screenshot a lot of this stuff and I should have, I didn't realize how big this was all going to blow up into. Right. Um, so I had reposted something. I, what Eva was posting was really starting to piss me off. It was disrespectful. It was dismissive. It was just like so corny. Like Eva, Eva, Eva just really like gives me the vibes of somebody who was like nobody was checking for, for like the, the vast majority of her life. Uh, and, and was just embarrassing for most of her life. And then like got like a little bit of internet clout and then like dis doesn't know how to act now. And it's just like one of those just like real annoying, like, <laughs> you know, I'm going to be like, you know, I I'm going to troll you and <laughs> try to see if I can get a rise out of you. And it's just like, bro, you're a cornball for real. Okay. So anyway, so I, so I reposted whatever, whatever the fuck it was that she said. She's a core and she tries to make it as if the issue is we're all mad that she's friends with this like, you know, like Duchess Lois dude, which it's like, bro, no one, it's gross and it's like weird, but that's all you sis. And I made it clear. Like I have this homosexual transsexual dude and I've talked about him a lot. We don't, we haven't talked recently, but there was a time where I, we, I used to talk to him practically every day. He used to like low key follow my channel and I used to always tell him and I used to like sometimes be like, Hey, if you watch the upcoming video, just forewarning, it's probably offensive, you know? And there was literally times when sometimes I'd be talking and I would know that he was in the chat and it would give me this like moment of pause almost where I was like, uh, but it doesn't matter, you know? And it's like, and if he doesn't get that, then it, then he, he can beat it. You know what I mean? Cause it was like, and he was always like real cool about stuff, but it was like, uh, I, I, I would never compromise where I stand on things just to, you know, like be in good standing, uh, with one of these guys. And that, that's really the biggest complication with being friends with them is because when you're thinking about points that you want to make, you know, you, you, your brain goes to them at a certain point and you're like, Oh, this is, you know, how do I word this so that I don't ruin that friendship or how do I word this so I don't hurt his feelings, you know? And you start to make these little concessions, these little, you know, you tone it down a little bit or you make it the, the language a little more vague so that maybe you can like, he can feel like, well, it doesn't really apply to him. And, and, and it's all, it's just like, it's all fine if you're just like a private citizen, you know, and it's really all fine, period. But if you're going to be like a leading voice in this fight, and if you're going to have the platform of like things like Redux that I believe is one of the most important feminist publications of our time, then um, yeah, you know, you have a responsibility to the women that you represent. And I'm sorry, I, I don't, it, it does, I don't care. We have a right to constantly, uh, Kelly J. Keene, when she did her live stream on this whole thing, she said, she said, constantly make your feminist leaders earn your respect. They need to constantly earn, you know, uh, uh, your, like the right for you to follow them. They need to constantly earn your trust and re-earn it all the time. Right. And if they start to deviate from that, you know, be prepared to take an honest, critical look at that and call them out. And if they don't want to, you know, get right or, or acknowledge like kind of where they're going off track, then then you need to really take that and consider what that means and what the real motivations are. Um, so so. All right, so I, I like reposted something that Eva wrote. And I said, Des decides to wax poetic about her. Is she the big, they're like trying to make themselves like these like victims, these like political prisoners, and they're like being persecuted. And it's so cringe. And as you'll find, we're going to watch a video with the two of them. That's like their MO. 
it, they really go for the like we're like fighting against the odds we're these like victims and you're not a victim I said, decides to wax poetic about our sexually degenerative best friend who skinwalks women and who reduces us to a thought in some loser man's head as a response to women expressing valid concerns about the lack of boundaries demonstrated by Sister Salon. I said, and I was angry. I said, this insufferable woman writes for the precious redux, perhaps the most feminist, the, the most important feminist publication of our time, which I actually find soul crushing. How can you have such intimate knowledge of the stories contained within Redux and then turn around and treat women like this? And I said, this fucking clown, which again, I apologize. Sorry. I get it. Name calling doesn't get us anywhere. And I am sorry. I shouldn't have called her a fucking clown. I get it. Okay. I do apologize. That was wrong. Uh, and it sounds like I'm being sarcastic because I am using a silly voice, but I'm not. I am sorry. This fuck, but I'm not sorry about like the gist of what I'm saying. And I said, this fucking clown is going to be on some panel soon and is go, uh, and is going to charge people actually money, actual money to come listen to her speak on the topic of gender critical feminism. And I said, this shit is a game, is like a game to all these gender capture grifters. I said, these are our leaders. So then, uh, <clears throat> let's see. All right. So then, all right. Anna Slats came to check me, which, listen, you know, it's all good. Like, that, this is your friend, fine. So she said, e Eva is a good friend of mine, and I love her dearly. She's a very compassionate and caring person, not to mention an amazing writer. And I'm not interested in seeing her be called names or accusations of her being shifty. Well, you're right in that I should not have called her names. But, like, Anna, with all due respect, on what basis, so why, why would we not be allowed to call out shifty behavior is being shifty. Why? Because it's like, you know, a preferred in-group person. I don't think that that's valid, right? She isn't. Far from it. She's always been consistent and transparent in her views. She has knowledge of Lois's situation that is far and above what anyone on social media has. Lois in particular, having been vocal last year about a component of that, which was seeking medically assisted self-deletion as a result of sterilization and suffering, then we're going to go through that whole thing. Because, man, that that whole thing, I'm sorry. And, and I, I, I respect Anna Slats's right to think that of, that of that is like a valid move that these people are making. But it is grotesque to me. And, and the, the message that they're sending with what I believe comes off very much as an attention-grabbing grift is something else. It's like next level. So we're going to talk about it. Uh, that's an important story when we are so insistent on communicating the damage medical transition causes. Eva has also come to my defense on issues she doesn't even fully agree with me on. Lol, that's how much integrity she has. Well, that has, that to me, that has like less to do with intellectual integrity with all due respect and seems like, you know, she's prioritizing friendships and it's, again, and no offense, but it just, to me, to me, and I'm going to take full ownership of this, it does come off a little bit as somebody who maybe is not very emotionally well-developed or, you know, socially has a history of not like having many friends, right? So now that they're an adult where it's like, when adult, when you're supposed to really be able to stand on your values almost no matter what friends or anybody thinks, but now she's like prioritizing friends as if it's this like newfound thing that she's never going to give up on. Right. And, um, yeah, it's like, so I don't know why you would back issues that you don't believe in. That kind of, that to me, that's like just being like wishy-washy, you know, she can defend you as a, as a person and as a friend, like, Hey, I don't agree with her, but this is my friend. Watch how you talk to her. Right. But I don't think that that means she has that. That's to me, that's not like a sign of like intellectual integrity. Or, or uh, you know, like a, being having like value integrity, whatever. Mm. That's something I respect and appreciate about her immensely. Me and Eva don't agree on everything, but we are adults. We don't have to. When we have something to discuss, we do it. And that's all good. I respect that. Eva has not taken the time to discuss any of the concerns that women have presented. 
and instead has much made a bunch of like silly memes and tweets basically mocking the issues that women are spinning their wheels and wasting and draining their energy trying to explain to her right it would be, actually this would have gone a completely different way and i'd offered her the opportunity to debate me i would have been happy to have this conversation with eva right which i offered i wasn't taking up on it but i did offer uh, furthermore, I don't understand why Redux is being brought into this. Redux is in a cult. It's a news outlet drawing attention to the most important stories in, in this debate. Well, because she's a writer for Redux, right? And I feel like, you know, I understand that it's a news outlet. I just said that, I, you know, I feel like uh, it's a shame that I think that people who don't the reason, no, 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 hold on. What did I say? The reason why I brought it up was because if she's writing for Redux, again, as you say, it's a news outlet, then she has intimate knowledge about how gender ideology is actively causing real world harm to real world women. And it's almost like, how can she know all of that and be so familiar with the stories because she's literally helping to research and write them and then turn around and basically mock the same women that she's supposed to be like advocating for or helping with this, this like news, uh, you know, circuit for expressing like relevant concerns, right? That's the point. And it's not Redux being brought into it. It's her experience with Redux. I'm not calling Redux out for hiring her again. You know, if she... It's a job, as long as she can perform the task, if she's a good writer, if she's good at uh, researching stuff, great. You know, you're the editor. I'm sure, you know, you're going to be the one who, like, if she kind of strays off, you know, whatever, you're going to be like, hey, no, let's, whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's like, so I'm, I'm sure she can perform the task. I think it's confusing that she's literally writing for an outlet that underscores better than any other publication has in the existence of, you know, uh, like like gender identity or ideology or transgenderism or really like human existence, who has done the best possible job at, at bringing awareness to these issues, how she can have such intimate knowledge of those issues and still turn around and mock women for being concerned about uh, our boundaries being breached. And, and how, you know, like some of these decisions by leaders in our movement are compromising our goals. That was the issue. It's not a, some sort of like a criticism of Redux, which again, I've made literal videos. I've made four hour videos where I highlight all of the stories that you guys have written, right? I've made four hour videos literally in tribute to Redux. I, I literally like, I don't know. I, I don't know how much more like respect and gratitude. I could like fucking vomit all over the place for Redux, but like I'll say it for like 50 billion more times. It, I think it is so critically important. I could not be more grateful. Like I, it, it would be, or re, I'd be really hard pressed to want to like find a reason to start shit with you or Genevieve because I think that level of contribution has just been so uh, immense. I've used Redux as, as a tool for to to do stories on here i've used redux as a tool to confront uh fallacies in tra arguments um i i've used redux as a tool to peak people to to highlight what's going on it has been so invaluable and, and not just re not just redux and what they report on but also the sort of investigative journalism that they're doing the the light that they're bringing to these you know women's plights so that we can rally around those women and they can get the support that they need. You know, you, Redux is the reason why women are actually starting to starting to get some semblance of justice. You know, you're, you're bringing like to light the reality and the facts of, of things. And so that we can no longer be gaslit. You're creating a record. And it is so important, right? So like this is in no way some sort of like, you know, like, like shitting on Redux. Um, I don't understand why so often in the GC community, there's no way for women to hash things out in a way that benefits the movement as a, bro, I asked her to have a conversation. 
And in fact, we were, you know, with all due respect, Anna, with all due respect, women were hashing things out. That's what was going on under the uh, Sister Salon uh, picture. Women were, were, you know, women were passionate, sure. But we were. It was a broader conversation. Whereas, you know, with all due respect, your friend Eva was the one who decided to throw this guy in everyone's face, right? And, and mock and minimize and trivialize people. She could have added her voice to the conversation and she would have been one of the many other people who are disagreeing with women who, who want to hold the line, right? It was the way she went about it that was trivializing. It was disrespectful. Um, and so and whatever. So uh, let's see. Other movements don't operate. I mean, yeah, they do. <laughs> don't operate like this. TRA circle the wagons on abhorrent behavior just to prevent it from being weaponized by opponents. Meanwhile, our side can't even establish a disagreement while without blowing up the timeline. Dem I never demanded cancellations. I can't cancel her. A cancellation would be like, you know, her getting thrown off, uh, like me trying to get her like deplatformed, right? I'm just saying that, you know, like people should be aware of where she stands on stuff, you know, with relevant issues. And dragging the most effective players through the streets to take it. I mean, I give him. Um, let's see. Okay, so here's what I said. And I think it is, you know. It's like, but again, it's like, you no know, offense, but like you didn't actually acknowledge any of the concerns. You just didn't like how we express them. You feel me? And I don't like how your friend expressed her that concerns. So that's why I was reacting the way that I was. So it's kind of like, um, hold on for a second. Hey Anna. So I'm going to make this a video because I'm better at video than I am at writing as a format to express myself. Um, if it hasn't already been expressed deeply enough, I will say again, as I say routinely, um, the the respect and gratitude that I have for you and your work and Genevieve's work and Redux as a whole is not something that I, I think that I can even fully articulate or properly appreciate just with words alone. I constantly underscore what a critical resource it is that you both have given to us and to the world. And I, I truly believe that Redux is one of, if not the most important feminist publications of our time that have been so critically instrumental in bringing uh, gender critical issues and women's issues to the forefront and even injecting it into the mainstream in a way that just we had simply had not been able to accomplish before. And that's correct. Let's go to part two. All right, Britt, what do we have to say about part two? And it's like, bro, I'm like afraid to even check to see if Anna Slats is still following me because I'm like, man, I'm sure that that's done with. And it, it, it kills me. Like I said, it kills me to drive wedges between myself and these people that I think are so important. But, you know, everyone's saying that she's been like one of the most effective. Oh, it doesn't matter. Here we go. With that being said, I understand that this is your friend and I, I fully respect your, you know, feeling the need to come to her defense. Um, your friend Eva's behavior over the past two days, um, frankly, was fucking despicable. And, uh, and I apologize if you find this offensive, but it was fucking despicable. So there was an event in Brighton again, and we've just had this situation with a, a gen spec, you know, a big gen spec dust up where there was a gen spec conference, as you may or may not have paid attention to. Uh, and there is a really dangerous sort of pathological fetishistic transvestite um, guy who claims that he's an autogynophile. I don't think he is. I think he's a, a transvest transvestic fetishist. And I think he claims to be an autogynophile just for the shock value of it all. Um, this is a methamphetamine addicted predator who preys on gender confused women. 
uh, and grooms him into what he calls autoandrophilia because he has a sexual interest in being um, pegged by women and as he's written about extensively. And there's a lot of like, you know, proof to back up what I'm saying. So I say this to say there was a big issue with Jen Specht where they had posted a picture of this man posing alongside a so-called, you know, detransitioned woman who had medically harmed herself through gender medicine, whatever the case may be, testosterone. And Jen Speck thought it was a good idea to use this as an opportunity to promote this man in his book. Um, there was a lot of pushback and a lot of controversy within the community. A lot of people, a lot of women, detransitioners, trans widows, other women who have been affected by... Yeah. I mean, it, allegedly, but yeah, he's, he's, there, there's a lot of, again, if that, this is, if it's sort of stuff he'll do, the histrionics he'll pull uh, in public, you've got to imagine that the stuff behind, he'll do behind closed doors. And yeah, he allegedly has like a hardcore method addiction, allegedly people who have know him from his personal life and he's, you know, abusive to women and he does like these long grooming periods where he gets them to you know, kind of like fit mold them into what he wants them to be and, and breaks them down emotionally so that they become like real emotionally dependent on him. And there's, there's a lot of really sinister stuff. So every woman who expressed and everybody who was like, Oh, it's just the blue dress. You know, what's the problem? Every woman who expressed a, an immediate concern about him and especially him, even though there were a few other men wearing dresses, but it was like, everyone's alarms went off over him. Uh, just know that your internal alarm is alive and well and, and is properly functioning because you were right on the money. He is absolutely a creep, absolutely not somebody that, that we want involved in these conversations whatsoever. Um, so um, let's see. With that being said, I understand let's, that this. My bad. Hold on. I just, the reason I'm going to show this is because it's important. I'm going to try my best. To, there's so much stuff and I'm going to just try my best to be as concise as possible for those who haven't been following along because it's a lot. Again, this all started off as like, it was like an AGP gate photo, you know, 2.0 and that's where the conversation was. But then it was like Eva started pulling a bunch of stunts to draw the attention to herself and to Lois. And it was, again, it's like, attention farming it really was just like a histrionic like well look at me you know this is a viral and, and it's exactly what sierra did it's exact almost and it's funny because era uh, eva and sierra kind of like teamed up over this whole thing that's a whole other thing but uh uh you know sierra exalanzic did the exact same thing during the uh, phil illy agp gate you know it was like once uh laura was getting all of this attention and she saw that it was like a hot button issue. Um, you know, uh, and I guess Sierra was like, Oh yes, I got my own picture with Phil Illy and that's causing a bunch of pain and confusion and getting everybody all riled up. Let me post my own photo so I can try to, you know, like hop in while, while the iron's hot and, and get some engagement and attention myself. Right. And double, triple, quadrupled a million times down. Uh, which is exactly, which is all that it was. And that was my immediate, and I tried to like help her justify it because I'm just trying, was trying, trying, trying to, you know, be positive and, and maybe, you know, make like a, a like n best case scenario. And I was like, oh, I guess you were just trying to like stand up for your friend. And that's what she had said. And I was like, well, we can go with that excuse. She's like, oh, you know, I, she she had a million different like justifications for why she did it. But that was why it, it was to let me jump on and get some attention because um, there's this this big hot button thing going on. And it's a cheap, honestly, pathetic move to really spit in the faces of the women who have supported you and who have, you know, really built your platform and, and women who actually are like fighting for this. Right. But it, it but it makes sense because it was like, you know, Sierra had just been she, she kind of will like side with whoever she wants to be friends with. So it was like when she, you know, she used to like puppy dog after Karen Davis. Right. And it was like, she would take Karen Davis aside no matter what, and kind of like prove how great of a friend she was to Karen. Right. 
Then she went to Jen's spec. And once that kind of fell apart and, you know, then it was like she went to a little Jen spec because she acted like she was totally against Jen spec. Then she went to Jen spec, got a bunch of people coming up to her. She even said like, oh yeah, it was crazy. A bunch of people came up to me like, hey, I know you from the internet. And she was like, it was so cool to be with all these like, you know, celebrities from the internet basically and being amongst them and having people recognize me. That was exciting. Again, people who probably didn't have a lot of friends growing up who are like, this is, this is the first time they've ever felt like, wow, I'm special right now. So it's like to sort of maintain that good standing with them. You know, she just it was doing all these mental gymnastics to justify um, their very wrong position, you know, so that they'll look at her as like, oh, wow, you're so diligent at like, you know, doing a PR cleanup for us. And it's lame. It's lame. If you're that easy to sell out your ethics just so you can belong, that's lame. And you just, that's fine, but you just don't belong as some like leading voice in all of this. Um, and it's, it's exactly like, like her, even her whole explanation of being trans in, in, at Berkeley, you know, at, at school in Berkeley, uh, in California, you know, it had clearly had nothing to do with gender dysphoria. And if you listen, I, I can pull up a few interviews where she talks about, she's like, you know, it was in my friend group and in my, a lot of, you know, she was taking a lot of gender studies classes and be making friends within that sort of circle of people involved in gender studies. She's like, you know, trans was really becoming a thing and an and interest for people in gender. And, you know, all of a sudden she decides that she's trans and she is a medical transitioner because she took some birth control, which makes no sense, obviously, which again, trying to claim that she's a detransitioner was about trying to fit in with detransitioners, right? You know, it was like, oh, like, let me like claim this identity is because I took birth control. That makes me a medical trend. It means I medically transitioned. Once I stopped taking the Depo Provera shot, that means I would medically detrans. It was like, bro, come on. Like, are you just coming up with anything you can to fit in with like who's around you at that exact moment? That's lame. That's lame. And, and it's fine if you want to be lame, but you can't be entrusted as like a voice for very vulnerable women about a very serious issue that women are having very real world consequences uh, to, right? So anyway, here. Um, and, and it was sort of being rubbed in their faces to not only invite this man, but to promote this man and promote his book that, you know, is in support of normalizing autogynephilia. I guess like one of the primary objectives. And so it's really clear that there's a lot of blurred lines going on here. And um, people within the so-called leaders within this community... People within the so-called leaders within this community seem like they're selling out women who actually are facing the, the, the real world consequences of this ideology. So fast for the reason why I bring all of this up is fast forward to this weekend in Brighton in the UK. There was an event um, by an organization called Sister Salon. Now, Sister Salon, I guess, hosts events once a month that are billed as female only events. Um where they talk about issues r related to safeguarding of women and children and protecting against the pestilence. Well, and also the reason why too, so because I firmly uh, disagreed with Exelanzic on her bizarre, um, you know, conflation of the end slur against black people and doing this on Martin Luther King Jr. Day, no, no less, uh, basically said that the, the term pet troon is tantamount to the N word, right? The, 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 like, a uh, uh, a term of pet N word, which is, and I was like, for fuck's sake, Sierra, like my God, the, these, like these really, I think like low, you know, cheap, maneuvers you'll do to win arguments is ridiculous and somebody made a really good point was because she went from being because we the whole Phil Illy thing got brought up again and her decision to post her photo and and she was on the defensive right and and people were talking about the whole pet troon thing and then she you know was able to try to uno reverse it to her being on the offensive and putting everybody else on the defensive by making this terrible correlation between the n-word and the term troon right uh and everybody's like bro no 
absolutely, absolutely not. How offensive is that? And it is, again, it's just these cheap maneuvers to win arguments. And so whatever, because I like disagreed with it, she unfollowed me. And, you know, so I'm like, I, I, you know, it's like, it's all good. She didn't do anything wrong to me, you know, but it's like, to me, that's like letting me know that it's like, whatever, the end of the relationship and your terms are acceptable to me, Sierra. Like they're fully acceptable to me. Cause like I said, and I did a whole thread, that was a very one way relationship. Okay. I, I, I made a whole fucking petition. I made a petition when you got your, um, uh, channel taken down. Uh, excellent. You know, I made a petition when you got your channel taken down. I've done, you know, new, anytime you got a new channel, I'd always make a post being, Oh, you know, she's back up. Go follow her. Uh, I hosted you on my channel. Not one, not two, but three times. I, let's see, I, I literally, look at this. I had made a uh, a meme celebrating your work. Content. I don't think you've ever retweeted one of my videos ever, ever. I, I don't think you've ever retweeted me, period, right? I, you've never, you don't even help publicize the, the, the videos and the interviews that I've like brought you on my channel for. You've never even retweeted them or helped me publicize them. It's like, I've got to do all that myself. You know what I mean? And it's like, you know, cool. And I've had you at my house multiple times, whatever the case may be. And I don't listen. And to be clear, I don't do things for people uh, so that they'll do things for me back. But I'm just saying if me then disagreeing with your really ridiculous and frankly offensive racist take just to win an argument is what, you know, will like, uh, is a, a relationship ending thing for you, then like good riddance, bro. Like, you know, good, good fucking riddance. After like everything that I've done to be supportive of you and your work, you made one supportive tweet of me one time back in 2019. And I literally broke my, or what was it? 2020. And I like practically, or 2020 or 2021, or whenever the fuck I got started. I like literally broke my back, bending over backwards, thanking you and outpouring of gratitude. And you're like my hero. And it was always like, you know, I was like the fan and you were this important like guru. And it's like, whatever the fuck, like, I, bro, I don't even care. Um, you know, again, I wrote, oh, reinstate Excellenzic and, and, you know, the censorship of gender critical commentary on YouTube started by a slightly twisted female. And I remember her first response that was like, whatever the case. And I was like, on February 5th, 2022, content creator Excellenzic was deplatformed by YouTube through a removal of her rapidly growing gender critical channel under the same name. You know, and I was like, what I say? Uh -huh. Excellenzic brings a compassionate, rational, informed, and crucial perspective to the current discourse around gender identity and its far-reaching social and legal implications. You know, and it was like, yeah, yeah, we're, we're fucking whatever. You know what I mean? Like, we feel that the termination of Excellenzic's channel has been a huge disservice. So... You know, if me disagreeing with you one time is a relationship ending thing, like I said, then like your terms are acceptable. All good. Um, so anyway, like, bro, I, I don't care. And I see her now. She's like, you know, like eating Eva's ass right now, which it's like, again, it's like, are you just, you know, whatever whatever. There's no consistency or really like intellectual integrity. And then also another thing that just was really kind of gross was when we did the uh, live stream together and she was making these really, I think, baseless, ridiculous claims. She'll just spiral into like defending her position at all costs rather than saying, Hey, maybe I made a mistake or Hey, maybe you're right. Or, you know, maybe I don't know as much about this topic. And so I, you know, I made some assumptions, but I, you know, I could be wrong. She'll spiral into these insane mental gymnastics to somehow prove that she's right rather than ever, God forbid, admitting to be wrong. And it was like when we had our uh, live stream together, she was talking about how basically autogynophilic men or, you know, fetish and cross dressers are essentially psychotic and they're so psychotic that they're, um, that they're dissociative and they're unable to control the impulse to put on women's clothes and act out their fetish in public. And I was like, for fuck's sake, I was like, the only reason that we're seeing an explosion of it 
is is because it's being enabled now. I said it's always existed. We've always had cross dressers and they usually kind of like hit off in the shadows somewhere. But now that it's being, you know, normalized, so I was like, no, they have what do you mean they have no control? What do you mean they have absolutely no control? It's something that's like what their hands are just moving for them and putting on these women's clothes and I was like that's an insane thing and so we like debated it for a while and she didn't actually have any like facts or science to back up what she was saying and then eventually I was like I'm sorry you know we just disagree and she goes well uh, she she did like a, a cheap appeal to authority where it was like well I, I'm more right than you are because I have more experience being a um I have more professional experience in this topic. So, you know, you don't know what you're talking about. I was like, you're a speech pathologist, this is Sierra. What are you talking about? In that case, then me being a, you know, midwife, a home birth midwife and a birth worker makes me an expert on it too. I'm just as legitimate of an expert as you are because that you, your like field of expertise has nothing to do with what we're talking about with paraphilic men and their compulsions. She's like, well, I've had exposure to men with it. And I was, like, that was kind of like how you basically like, you know, try to pass yourself off as a uh, pathologist, leaving out the speech part, a pathologist who's an MD, who's a trained physician. I remember that when you used to tell everyone you were a pathologist. I used to tell people that you were a pathologist. I'm like, wow, I found this awesome new content creator. She's a pathologist. She's an actual MD. I come out, find out that you're like a, a speech therapist. I was like, oh. I remember being like kind of embarrassed. I was like, oh, I didn't like, why are we kind of like, like intentionally misleading people into thinking that you were like a physician? Anyway, it doesn't matter. So, you know, and again, no ill will. I'm not going to go and start starting, you know, shit with Sierra. I think she's made some very valuable contributions. I don't hate her. Um, I just think that she's a very one way person. And I think she's, uh, it's very much like r slash I am very smart. You know, it, it's just like the kind of condescension, it gets old. But uh, anyway, that is gender ideology, and it's the harms that come with it. Uh, they hosted an event this past weekend, wherein they decided to invite. Wait, did I do that already? Hold on. Did I do this part? Trans identifying males who have special relationships with some of the so-called feminist leaders in, in this movement, women that. Well, and that's another thing, like, you know, and I don't listen, I don't want this to be like a shitting on Sierra thing. Okay. Because I still respect her as a woman and as a human being. And I don't think she's like a monster. I think that she has some toxic traits. Uh, I think that she's a little full of herself and again it's r slash i am very smart but i think a lot of that is rooted in like deep insecurity i think that if you're a secure person you can acknowledge when you're wrong and you don't need to fight to the death and i think when you're a secure person you don't go through these like you know you don't alter your entire self to fit in with people that you want to be cool with and you who you want to like you so you know and i've always i mean it's like no offense but i think any of us can kind of like tell that that's probably what was going on and i feel like that's why i probably always had a lot of like more like you know just sort of sympathy to the whole thing but um uh yeah it's just it's just it's just a, it's just a pattern um Anyway, I don't know what I was saying. Did I, did oh. I, can you guys tell me, did I play this section already? Does anyone know? You know, I think she does a great job of exposing some of the horrors of um, the SRS surgery. And I think that's been so valuable, you know, and I refer her videos. And I, as you guys know, I've referred her work a lot. Um, but it's like, like I said, it's just a one sided thing. I invite her to every thing I've ever organized. Um, you know, so I, I do kind of just see her as like, she'll build herself at all costs and it, it's all very like self-serving, you know, I, I think she sees herself as being this like guru and whatever. Um, did I play this part? A lot of people really look up to, so Kathleen Stock and Julie Bindle. Um, and you know, when trans widows, when women who have been harmed by gender ideology spoke up and expressed their sort of concern about why what is, you know, typically been a female only space. Okay. One of the few spaces. All right. People are saying I did play this one. All right. So then it's this one that's next. And your friend Eva's response. Yeah. Hold on. Was to begin trolling your 
And your friend Eva's response was to begin trolling these women. Again, this woman, Eva, who is building a career off of, you know, reporting on and engaging with the pain and the trauma that is being inflicted on women and children as a byproduct of the sexual degeneracy that is, you know, autogynephilia and it's it's associated paraphilias and whatnot. And the gender ideology that is enabling and permitting men with these paraphilias to have unfettered access to their intended target. And she decided then was the time to basically spit in the faces of women who are expressing really right, righteous outrage and, and, and concern. A woman who has been put in a position as being uh, a writer, a voice for us a voice for women who are fighting desperately for our rights and the rights of our daughters, right? And I don't think it's cute. And she made it very clear that her priorities lie with her personal friendships and, and that, you know, her concern for women and children uh, and, and their boundaries is 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 theoretical and, it, and it's just a professional it's just professional, right? It only goes so far as it needs to go where she can, you know, crank out the next uh, bit of content. And, and women have an absolute right to check the shit out of it. And I'm sorry, I really believe that this sort of infiltration of like the, you know, the gender critical uh, trans apologists, like the true trans Trojan horse, it is actually one of the most insidious infiltrations that we're now up against. Because about calling out people, and I have been and will continue to be vocal about calling out people who make it clear that their motivation is is, is more, you know, about personal gain and, uh, you know, professional development than actually helping to maintain the boundaries of women and children. Eva made it clear that she's only paying lip service. And then, you know, to also make, uh, you know, she's going and talking about how, you know, she likes Benjamin Boyce, which of course is a nod to the whole gen spec thing because you have Benjamin Boyce who sat there and platformed again. this, And that was the thing. It was like, Eva, Eva was like, oh, you know, while I'm getting everybody upset, I'm just going to drop this. I like Benjamin Boyce. And he's like, oh, oh like at your service. And it's like, you, all you're doing is like outrage farming. It's like Eva's whole point was to what? Like drain women of their emotional resources, women who were working tirelessly against these huge forces, women who are, have real world pain and, and who are experiencing real world harm from this, you know, real world women who aren't just like, you know, some child free lesbian in Canada who, you know, goes out to bars, you know, multiple nights a week and whatever it is. And like, who, you know, this is all just like, she's getting paid. She's getting paid and make it building a career and a reputation off of talking about this topic. She doesn't, she doesn't lose anything from talking, from being gender critical, you know? And she doesn't lose anything from being wishy-washy. She doesn't really like, you know, lose anything from whatever. She clearly has no problem sharing spaces with paraphilic men. So it's like, it's all just, it's all theoretical, you know? It's all just like, oh, whatever we can do to like crank out the next bit of content. And it's like, fuck you. Really, fuck you. You know, feet take there. There's hunt. There's millions of people who have the same position that you have. Go hang out with them. We're not calling them out for a reason. The issue is that you've been held up <clears throat> as some kind of like champion for women's rights on this topic, and, and this is your response. And this is how you want to like waste the time and energy and, and try to st stoke pain and and. and you know, play with the trauma of women who have actually been harmed by this. Go fuck yourself. Like, really, fuck you. You know, and, and like, sorry, like, you know, and, and I, you know, no, no. Meth addicted, fetishic transvestite who's talking about normalizing autogynephilia, which is a predatorial 
paraphilia that targets women and children. He's platforming this guy, practically flirting with him the whole time, giving him googly eyes. And, you know, I don't hate Benjamin Boyce. Don't get me wrong. He was really, really, you know, kind to me when he interviewed me. He gave me a wonderful opportunity, which helped build my platform by having me on his channel. I'm grateful for the work that he does. I do think he's uh, excellent at interviewing, but I also think that he has some very male centric views on things. I think he's going to, you know, side with his bros, push come to shove. You know, he's kind of like a red pill bro, right? And it's like he, I, I think he is a guy in andromorphophile. I think he's a gamp. So the way that he kind of like, I think that he, you know, he's like, bi I, he comes off as like bisexual and he was like practically flirting with Phil Illy and like purposely not trying to hear what, um, you know, the guy who was debating Phil Illy was trying to say. And it's, again, it's Benjamin Boyce. None of this really affects him. You know, it's like he could build a platform off of being edgy and speaking out against gender ideology, but it's like, it's not, it's, it doesn't mean it's not serious to him. It doesn't actually have any real consequences for him. So it's like, yeah, fuck it. You know, he doesn't have to hold a hard line because he won't be affected you know, if if the boundaries are breached, it doesn't affect him. That's the issue. And he doesn't care enough about the people who he does affect or he's not seeing how it affects them. Or if he is seeing it, he doesn't care. And I think that's the biggest issue. It's like, these are women who are supposed to know better and they do know better. So the fact that they're going and doing the opposite means that they don't care. Right. It, it would be one thing if they just didn't understand and they weren't as familiar with this topic and they hadn't been educated and they needed to, you know, kind of be peaked more. No, no, no. These women know what the hell's going on. These women know what the issue is. And all these other women are spinning their wheels, trying to explain it to them to the best of their ability. And they sit there, they pretend not to get it just so that you'll, you'll drain more emotional resources, trying to explain something to somebody who is committed to not understanding you. Don't waste your time. These people understand. They don't care. That's the problem. You know, and, and calling all of the, you know, the women who are speaking up against it as being like, you know, hysterical and, you know, these typical like, oh, these like feminists are all. Gigi, I don't give a fuck. I didn't say it was a feminist position. I said the man was nice to me, bro. I said he was fucking nice to me. I've clearly taken a hard line against uh, Benjamin Boyce on ideological stuff. I said I don't hate him on a personal level. I vehemently disagree with him on his politics and, and stuff like that. And that's literally the issue with the whole Eva thing. I'm not integrating Benjamin Boyce into, you know, as somebody that I'm like trying to like, you know, uplift and draw attention to his platform because I, I think that he's platforming bad and dangerous ideas, which is what Eva's doing. She's play it's not just like, oh, she's just friends with the the, the Troon dude. That would have been fine. Nobody would care. It's that she's she's weaponizing him against other people, not weaponizing Benjamin Boyce. So like, shut up. Like you have their panties in a bunch again because it's all theoretical to him because he doesn't, you know, it's not actually important. He doesn't actually have to deal with the fallout. You know, same with the, these privileged people, no offense, like your friend Eva, where it gets to all be theoretical to her. She doesn't have children. It doesn't matter. She doesn't have daughters who might actually have to face this. She's not locked up in prison, being terrorized by one of these men. No, she can build a career off of paying lip service to it and holding up a sign and everyone can give her the accolades. Meanwhile, it's actually women who are rotting in prison who are actually facing the true fallout from this. And then she can go skip off with her degenerate friend. OK, and she made it clear that her, you know, her lowest friend. So it's not just that she was like, oh, this is my friend. I'm fr I have some of these. I have friends. I'm friendly with some of these troons. I talk about the one troon that I did the. Uh yeah, the interview with was funny. Right. And I used to talk to one of them, but I don't throw them in people's faces. Uh, Carol John says, I strongly dislike those who behave reasonably while willfully misunderstanding. And it is such an abuser tactic to when you're purposely, you're doing things that you know are, are triggering to somebody, you're purposely poking at their trauma, and then you're purposely 
willfully misunderstanding them or misrepresenting them, but, and then you, you get them into where they're emotional now and they're activated. And so they look hysterical and then you sit there and pretend to be like, oh, what are you so upset about? <laughs> oh, why are these ladies just so hysterical? <laughs> calm down. <laughs> it's not that serious. You can't you can't just have a calm conversation. Like, no offense, but that was sort of what like Anna was doing. Anna was like, oh, I mean, geez, we don't have uh, the other TRA movement doesn't get like this. Yeah, women are hurt, Anna. <laughs> women are hurt. Of anybody, like you guys should understand that you report on it daily. You've created a critical resources. Yeah, women are hurt. Like is that you find that shocking? You find it shocking that women are emotional about this? You find it shocking that they're going to get the reaction that you're purposely trying to uh, incite when you poke at their trauma and poke at their pain? And then you're like, oh, wow, calm, calm down. <laughs> God, you guys are just like so like crazy. It's just like, whoa, chill. Like, bro, fuck off. You know what the fuck you're doing. Like, it's so, it's so, it's just like, it's like abuser behavior for real, for real. Um, and I have been and will continue to be vocal. Uh, let's see. Eva, all right, so Slat says, Eva stated quite clearly that she doesn't even know who the troon, hold on, in the photo was. She, well, so, so if he was, uh, if, hold on, so if he didn't, she didn't even know who he was. What, what if he was like a child R-A-P-I-S-T? What if he was a P-E-D-O? Would, 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 would the discourse be the same? Because so, so what, it, peop, women are the problem because they're saying that we don't want these men who pose a direct threat to safeguarding of women and children involved in conversations about safeguarding of women and children is, that's the problem. that That's what you got, like, that's what she needs to go take a strong, firm stance on. Um Let's see. And was standing up for Bindle and Stock, both of whom have done tremendous amount of work on this issue, but were then being sacrificially burned at the stick. Come on. Women express, again, like, do we need to go back to what women were saying? Let's see. Where is it? And I don't, again, I'm like, I don't, I am really committing like professional suicide by even starting, starting like problems again with like, you know, I don't want to start problems with Anna. I don't want to start problems with Genevieve. I have a good relationship with Genevieve. I've had a good, like a, you know, I, I have interacted with Anna less than Genevieve, but, um, and it's like the last thing I want to do is drive a wedge between myself and them, but I, I've got to like what am I doing here if I'm I'm going to be flimsy, right? What am I doing here if I'm just going to tailor my beliefs to, you know, be agreeable to whoever I, I want to, you know, win favor from? Unfortunately, I, I can't do that. Uh, and, and this isn't like personal. And I still, even if they don't fuck with me anymore, I will still like probably rep them till the day I die. But like, let, let's say again, you know, um, you know, let's talk about the burning at the stake, shall we? You know, would the esteemed Katie John be welcome in a female only counseling group with you, Sarah? Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> I said, I guess no one can ask you legitimate questions. I massively overestimated you. Glad to know where you stand. Is that burning at the stake? Even, even... <laughs> Even Rex Landy, who's typically like the most like ferocious, just said he's a man. Fuck off with that, you quislings. But that was very mild for Rex Landy. Um, let's, yeah, Judy C says, why is he speaking? He's a man. Orwell was right about the left, says sisters and Mr. Salon. Uh, 
that Bray Juan says reality based, that's a man and no amount of gaslighting is going to make him a woman. How do you marry having a pet troon with your fight for single sex spaces? Who gets to decide which men are womanly enough to be accepted into our spaces? Hashtag no pet troons. Hashtag trans women are... Wow. Yeah, this looks like some real like ad hominem. Like this is like a witch burning. This is, this is really, this is like a real pile on. Like, come on. You know what I mean? With all due respect. With all due respect. Um, let's see. That's all. There was no trolling women. It was trolling women. I mean, with all, and I, I, you're welcome. You're welcome to disagree with it, Anna, because it is, it's my opinion that it is trolling of women to start posting a bunch of pictures of her and like Duchess Lois and then go on to make like these like Pokemon memes with her and Lois. And they're like, again, it is, it is, it is a little bit trolling of women. It is. It's not like she was like, Hey guys, you know, slow down. I can't show what was going on because she blocked me, but no, it did. In my opinion, it was a trolling of women. Uh, Eve, Eva has literally never been in favor of men using women's places, except her best friend has used women's bathrooms for close to two decades. Right. Uh, there is no point of disagreement on the core issue. It's a point of disagreement on the drama. And had you just approached her, that could have been established rather quickly. I did. though. I did approach her. That that was not even my first thing towards her. Uh, I did approach her and she wouldn't respond to me. She would just go and make these kind of like indirect little like quippy uh, posts on her own thing. She wouldn't even respond to me directly, right? I, you know, whatever. I guess the first thing that I said to her was like, oh, wow. I didn't realize that this is where you stand. I was like, you know, unfollow. No offense. And she goes, oh, thank God. Or what did she say? She was like, finally. And then I like was like, uh, and I explained whatever. And she, she would never interact with anything I said directly. She would just like responses that were in support of her. So I tried. Anyway. Paraphilias to have unfettered access to their int intended target. So then what else? Hold on. Sorry, we'll get through this. I've been and will continue to be vocal about calling out people who make it clear that their motivation is, is, is more, you know, about personal gain and, uh, you know, professional development than actually helping to maintain the boundaries of women and children. Eva made it clear that she's only paying lip service. And then, you know, to also make... Uh, and then she's going and talking about how, you know, she likes Benjamin Boyce, which, of course, is a nod to the whole Gen Spec thing, because you have Benjamin Boyce, who sat there and platformed, oh, again, this, this meth-addicted, fetishistic transvestite. Oh, I already did this part. Let's see. Five. Oh, here we go. It was like mad cool and we laughed and whatever the fuck. I have another one, this homosexual transsexual that I talk to on a regular basis. But you know what? I don't. I mean, I don't talk to him anymore, but there was a time we used to talk a lot. Do I don't throw that relationship in the face of traumatized women who are rightfully speaking out about the disappointment they feel when our fem Gabs Clark is in the house. Everyone say hello to Gabrielle. Gab, it's so good to see you. Feminist leaders make it clear that they don't actually give a fuck about the stuff that has built them a career. Okay, and, and it and, and sitting there and just like playing in women's faces. I'm a mother. See, I guess it makes it easy for me because I know that, you know, a lot of people have to navigate, negotiate these different political and professional relationships and stay in good standing with people. And not everybody has the same motivations. And maybe I'm lucky because the only people that I'm truly beholden to in any of this my are my four children and my four nieces and two nephews, one who's in heaven. And I still fight for him. Those are the only people who need to like me. Those are the only people whose work, uh, I, who, 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 who I need to stand by and who are the only measure of my success. If I am effective in protecting them, if I am effective in being a voice for them, then I am a success. You know, and I can lose any other professional, personal, whatever relationship. So long as I'm doing right by then, then I am well on my way.
I am exactly on track and I am exactly where I need to be, right? And I'm sorry, but uh, the people, you know, we, we need to protect this movement from being infiltrated by people who, you know, are, are wishy-washy or even at worst nefarious uh, and who are more than happy to open the back door to let some of these people trickle in. Yeah, so TPS says X is extremely dramatic. Her comparison to anti-Semitism was a stretch. And that's the type of shit that I'm talking about where it's like you're going to weaponize like the pain uh, of, you know, entire marginalized groups of people so that you can win Twitter arguments, right? So that you can like, you know, like far, like garner sympathy for yourself and support. It's just not necessary and it's cheap and it's lame. Um all right, so fuck all this shit. You guys understand like where I'm coming from with this. All right, so so I went in a little bit on All right, so I said here was my issue. Well, so this is the dude, right? Which again, who no one was checking for until uh what's her name decided to start throwing him in our face. Hold on, let me see. Duplicate. Let me grab a couple. I want to see if I can get a couple more. Um All right. While I'm doing this, I'm going to look for something on here. All right. So here's the, here's the dude that Eva is like BFFs with, right? Uh, Duchess Lois of Alberta. Um, and he is always claims that he's like gender critical and supportive of women. And, and Christina Goki said it. And I've said this before and she's dead. Right. And I've, and I've made this point a while ago. Um, the next level of, you know, for, for these men, the thrill is about accessing truly female only spaces. Right. And that is the most affirming thing. So what is the most female thing being a turf, right? Only women are turfs, you know, uh, a trans exclusionary radical excuse me, radical feminists are TERFs, right? So it's like a lot of these women who took, you know, issue with the, uh, you know, trans identifying males. Well, it's like, imagine what next level, what dream that is. It's sort of like the, you know, trans identified males who target lesbians, gold star lesbians is like the ultimate trophy of affirmation. If I can somehow coerce a gold star lesbian to sleep with me, I have, you know, that that is the ultimate trophy of you know, I've, I've, I've made it, I've achieved success, uh, you know, of being affirmed as a woman and the same thing with being a turf. And I've said that this is why I think the, the true trans thing is so attractive to some of these, like, you know, true trans people who claim that they're the true transsexuals, right? Because it's like, that's why they'll take on these gender critical talking points because then, you know, right now it's only transgenders who are taking on the, you know, like it's transgenders who dominate the whole, um, like queer theory, leftist gender, uh, ideologue talking points. Right. But you know, it's all women who were against gender ideology, women and like their male supporters, whatever. But it's like, how can I separate myself from the whole crowd of other men LARPing as women? How could I be the special one? I got to somehow find a way to join forces with TERFs. You know, once I can sort of like appropriate TERFhood, TERFdom, if I can get other TERFs to actually accept me in, oh man, that's like the ultimate. And that's exactly what this guy does. He's a complete hypocrite. He's used the women's uh, bathrooms for close to two decades, and I'm sure he still does. I am fucking sh a lot of these dudes lie and pretend that they all oh, that he he's tried to like claim that oh i only use uh i only use disabled stalls no sir no, no you don't no you don't you might sometimes but if that's not available or if you don't feel like it you're using the women's bathroom he refers to himself as a woman all this other stuff so again eva's fighting for single sex spaces yet she's actively promoting and supporting a man who infiltrates and violates those spaces make it make sense so i said uh again let's see so everybody's like oh no he knows he's a man or whatever i said then why in the fuck does he still tell everyone that he is a true bona fide transsexual and imply that the uh the way he achieved such status was through excruciating self-harm have you 
uh, have you come to understand, I don't know what the hell I was trying to write, but I said, have you come to understand how dangerous the implication of what he's doing? Again, if he's saying that the only, this is why true transit, I think is actually particularly dangerous, even almost more dangerous than some of like the gender ideal ideology, which is like, oh, anybody can do it because they're basically saying that the only way to truly be trans, to really prove how truly trans you are is to go all the way. You've got to go all the way. And, and and do all the surgeries and do the most invasive stuff. Then you can be trans, right? So then it's like you have, um, so then it's like, what's it called? So you have these, you know, kids who are, these men who are so desperate to opt out of manhood and want to opt into womanhood so bad that they're going to follow this as a blueprint. This is how I can, I can be one of the true transsexuals. And so the only reason that he claims his true transsexual status is because he flayed his penis and inverted it up into his uh, pelvic cavity. So that's how he earned that extra special you know, status to call himself a woman. And he can pretend to be like a turf and a gender critical and all this sort of stuff. It's very insidious and it's dangerous. So I said, he's saying that the only way to be a true trans, somebody who has a full right to call themselves trans, is to engage in these surgeries. And for people trying to prove their identity, he's handing them the blueprint exactly. So again, he said, and this was uh, on you know 9 9 2023 said, Hi, Jack, I'm an actual, bona fide, authentic transsexual. Again, what does that mean? Because, you know, Richie... Richie, the uh, detransitioner, and he's coming on my channel. We've got to like figure out a time. Richie, who's awesome, who I, I fully respect, and then who's so much better than this guy. But Richie has gone all the way. He's a gay man who went all the way, and he was really kind of preyed upon, and he's in a lot of pain. You know what he doesn't do? He doesn't still call himself a transsexual woman, right? Uh, oh, yay, Richie, yay. <laughs> I like, yeah, I so I'm like finally back on and I'm definitely going to email you and we got to make that happen because I really want to hear from you because it's so important to hear from like men like you, real detransitioners like you who actually have integrity, right? And it's like, seriously, and, and I'm and I'm really grateful and proud of you. And it's like, that's why I point to you all the time because whenever people are like, oh, but you know, he's whatever. I'm like, no, 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 because they're not all doing it. There's some people who actually have integrity. There's some people who have, you know, gone all the way to the end and are like, hey, no, sorry, this didn't change anything. It doesn't give me some like extra special status. It's just this horrible tragedy and a tragic lie that I bought into. Right. And, and it's like so it's, you know, oh, God, I really want to hear from you like big time. Uh, we got to make that happen. You know, and he said, you know, I'm not upset at all by the conservatives proposed policies surrounding transition and much needed safeguards. It's about time, I say. It's like, ah, how rich that you can, like, take that on. You know what I mean? How rich. Um, so, all right. So let's just really quick. Uh, so I looked into a little bit more of, like, Eva and uh uh lois's stuff and man it gets weird and it's funny because i was like there what was it uh it was laura hobbs who i even had to retweet him as like a voice of reason hold on let me see if i can find it. as like a voice of reason laura hobbs was like the dude the like the guy who freaked out in uh popeyes like like, yeah, like he was like, they called me, sir. He's really funny. But like, I even him, who was like, no offense, so unhinged, uh, was like reasonable, you know, calling out some of like, like how dangerous what uh, this lowest dude's grift is right now. Let me see if I got, God, I've been tweeting so much. I like do not normally tweet this much. Um... You know, and that's the thing. It's like even like, you know, with Richie and stuff, like there are some detransitioners that I'm like, mm, I have to be a little bit skeptical of. And it's like, because I do think that some people are able to pull, you know, get pulled in. And I know, Richie, you had even said that like sometimes you kind of like, you know, slip back into something. And again, it's it's like a, it's like recovery from addiction, right? It's going to be, it's a long process. It's not like, 
oh, I'm detrans and now I'm where, you know, it, it's a long process of deprogramming yourself. But it's like, I see you taking active steps to like hold yourself accountable. And I see yourself taking active steps to make sure that you're being like intellectually consistent, you know? And I see where it's like, you could easily kind of take these cheap and easy little like outs, you know what I mean? Just for, as like a cope, but like you don't, you like real, I, I see you actively resisting that temptation. You know, and to me, that's respectable. That's something I want to platform. And anybody who says that, oh, it's, you know, but these, these true trans people are an important stepping stone. You know, it's good to hear from them because for some people, you know, it's what they need to really peak. And I'm like, no, 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 no. There is nothing that a single one of these uh, true trans people can teach anybody that Richie can't teach us, that, that Prisha can't teach us, right? I'd rather hear from the two of them all day long and platform the two of them all day long. And, you know, some of these other like genuine detransitioners than these other, you know, these true trans people, because that's what muddles the point. There's nothing that a true trans person can teach us that one of them can't. And I think they can do it with 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 actual intellectual integrity through and through in a way that true trans people don't have actual, you know, intellectual integrity. Um, mm -mm. Let me see. Hold on, let me see if I can find it. Oh, this is funny. Hold on. Wait. Ah. Th this, this meme is exactly, this is so accurate. It's so accurate. He says, hi, I'm a dude who likes to play devil's advocate because women's struggles are theoretical to me. It's fun to debate their right to equality. While we're here, I would like to center my voice and perspectives about a cause that means nothing to me. I'm here to take up all the oxygen in the room and exhaust women who are trying to fight against injustice so that we can maintain the status quo, which serves me. I have no interest in learning. Your frustration is my ultimate goal. Let's engage. Like that's who the, I'm sorry, that's like all like Eva and Lois have been like this meme like I want to change this meme to like a picture of the two of them because that that's literally like <laughs> so accurate to what some people's whole, an ultimate goal is and it's like what is your goal um yeah like Prisha's doing actual work that matters you know um uh, let's see if we can Oh, this was, uh, Karen was talking about, it was cool because on MLK day, Karen took some time to like share with us, you know, uh, like photos of her ancestors. And it's like, somebody said like during the whole, like, you know, the pet troon gate thing, that whole debate, it was like, even somebody said to Excellence, it was like, how many <laughs> times do there's literal, you know, uh, American descendants of slavery Black American descendants of slavery who are all in unison telling you how offensive and racist this is. And you're like double and triple and quadrupling down. Like you sometimes got to have the humility want to be like, you know, I'm wrong. But it's like, had you had that humility in the first place, you wouldn't have even made the whole, you know, pet N-word uh, comparison. Right. Um, let's see. Oh, and there, oh, anybody who doesn't know, Jenny Bear. Jenny Poo. Oh, Jen's going to come on uh, the channel next Monday. We're going to talk about a lot of the stuff that's going on. Jen is in Thailand right now in Bangkok and we miss and love her. Um, this is really funny. We should watch this another time. This is da -da -da -da. more on that shit. Oh, that, that was creepy. And like shout out to women like Amy Souza who really is holding the Amy Souza, who I think is good at being uh professional and Amy Souza, who's really good at like maintaining like, uh, you know, strong relationships with other gender criticals and being professional and, you know, not like she does a good job of like, eat, like holding her tongue and like not getting into, you know, like mud slinging and stuff, but she does not compromise. Like Amy Souza of all people is not making any special exceptions for anybody and is not making special exceptions just so that she can, you know, be on the, like on the ends with certain like politically advantageous relationships. And I respect that and like shout out to her. Same thing with Jennifer Thomas, same thing with Karen, you know, whether you like Karen's approach or not, you know, Karen is very intellectually consistent. She's very intellectually consistent and she's holding people accountable and it like makes people angry. Um, 
Aja the Empress, Jennifer Bialik, all people who are not playing the fence. Um, let's, oh, this was a horrible, horrible thing of this mom who was transitioning her daughter with Down syndrome. Jesus Christ. Um, let's see. Oh, well, let's see what this, this woman has been, anybody who doesn't follow her, let's see. Uh, it's, it's women exist has been posting a lot of really, really good stuff. Kind of exposing the hypocrisies with some of this like true trans stuff. I don't even remember what I was looking for, but she, I have tremendous respect for all you do, Eva. I followed along and agreed with this piece until, uh, what is written contradicted itself. This is the idea of true trans. So let's see what she said. So it said, furthermore, when someone is trying to manifest a gender identity, their locus of control sits not just in other people, but in the rest of the world at large. They rely on external accoutrements like uh, accoutrements like clothing and makeup to signal what gender they are without trying to appear or they are trying to appear as. They may go as far as to rely on external hormones to try and change how their body looks and even rely on surgeons to physically alter their body parts. Obviously, all of us rely on external world. None of us are entirely self-sufficient. And even if we have a strong internal locus of control, there is still much that's out of our control. But this is not the same on relying solely on the external world to recognize and manifest your identity for you. I should also add that not all trans-identified people are like this. I think the locus of control is one of the main differences people implicitly note. Oh, Christ. Actual or good trans people. I don't... Uh, let's see. She said, I don't believe there's such thing as good trans, but I do believe there is a big difference between people who decide to transition and consider the onus to be on themselves to pass and be treated as the opposite sex. And those who think the onus is on the rest of the world. How is that not true trans? Huh? To make them feel this is written by Eva, Eva Kurilova. Um, Ooh oh, at a certain one point, oh, let's see what that says. I think this is split that people pick up on when differentiating between the trans-identified people who really do just want to live their lives and those who want to tear the world down while paradoxically relying on it for their own sense of identity. It is also my experience that trans-identified people in the former camp are less likely to insist that they have a, quote, gender identity and more likely to view themselves as having a mental disorder, gender dysphoria, that they are managing the best they can. So like her friend Lois constantly says, I don't have a gender identity. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't consider myself trans, but you call yourself a transsexual and you call yourself a transsexual woman. Like it's like you, you, you can just, just saying things doesn't make it true, right? It's like, then you wouldn't consider yourself trans. Richie doesn't call himself trans. Shapeshifter doesn't call, you know, we can argue about whether or not shapeshifter is uh, you know, how he still wears dresses and kind of wears, you know, women's garb and things like that. But he does not mince words when he is very clear. He is not any form of a trans woman. He's not a transsexual. He's fully, you know, he's a man, right? Um, you know, and it's like, at least I respect that. I remember somebody, uh, even like VF555 was like, no, you know, if he actually wanted to be stand on what he's saying, he would go and get his breast implants removed. And it's like, no, no, no. Nobody has to go and do additional surgeries. To, to be detrans, right? You don't have to go and do, again, that's like kind of a supporting the idea of like, you know, gender. It's like, you've got to go and like make alterations to your body to fit. No, he's a male with or without the breast implants, right? Like he doesn't require that to go in under more invasive surgeries. It's like the idea that women who had uh, their breasts removed, you know, need to now go and get breast implants, you know, to now feel like full women. It's like, no, sorry, no one should have to pay for that. Because you're a woman even, you know, like with the, the double mastectomy. Let's see what uh, she said here. Hold on. The idea of true trans is that not all trans people are the same. Then what reasonable person would ever not believe in true trans? It's simply factually accurate that not all trans people think alike. And some are more reasonable than others. The impression I had of, quote, true trans is that it's when you think some men are actually in women's bodies, not that you believe trans people don't believe all the nonsense other trans people believe. What am I missing? The issue of true trans is that some people are faking being trans and some people are truly trans people. They really have a woman's brain. 
They really have a special brain that makes them, you know, legitimate to be considered as trans and that that's why we should use their preferred pronouns. You know, we, we should take the time to make special uh, exceptions for them. I get the pretending not to get it. All right, anyway, so let's look at this dude because this is creepy. This was creepy. So real quick, let me see if I can find it. Hold on. I wonder if he, if I still, if I'm blocked yet. Hold on, Lois Duchess. Ah, hold on. It's like, you know, out of the two of them, at least this dude never blocked me, but we'll find, oh yeah, at least he never blocked me. It's annoying, I don't think, it, can I search? It's annoying because I can't fucking search stuff. Um. Again, it's like all this corny stuff to all my haters. Like, bro, it's like trying to be like Alan, cute. I'm shooting nightmares at you. That's not how it works. If that's the way you feel. Pew, pew, pew. What are you doing? Um, I never had somebody so obsessed with my genitals other than your dad. Those people are crazy. I don't know what you're talking about. What, that you're a man? It's not about being obsessed with your genitals. You don't have any anymore. It's that you're a man. And, and again, if you're going to sit there and trivialize women's concerns about men who impersonate them as, oh, being obsessed with your genitals, you are a TRA. You're a TRA. Um, there was one that I thought was important before we all moved. So basically this dude was uh, applying, did this whole weird grift, this like where he's applying for medically assistance in dying, which is something, it's basically like legalized euthanasia, elective euthanasia in uh, Canada, right? So it's like the idea that people who are in so much pain can have like basically assisted, you know, S word, you know, self-deletion. Uh, and he signed up for it and it doesn't make any sense because he goes back and forth. God, I'm so fucking annoyed. How the fuck can you search people's stuff on, uh, on Twitter? Because he goes back and forth. I never thought a friendship would be so controversial. Oh, am I a Trojan horse? Yes. And we're going to go through how you are. Am I a true trans Trojan horse? <laughs> Lol. You have 20 Greek soldiers inside. It's all so funny. Not yet. If that's how, what you identify as, then yes. Assuming your pronouns are ye and ha. Uh, you're a man. Good. This guy's been awesome. Um, fuck. It sucks because... All right, hold on. Let me just read some of it because I can't pull it up on here. Hold on for a second. Um, ba -ba -da -ba. Hold on for one second. Where is the... Um, do I have any, uh, do I have any of my, uh, mods in here still? Cause I see that some people's stuff are getting, let's see. Do I still have any of my, um, uh, if not, I might temporarily give one of you a, is Kai in here? If, oh yeah, Kai, Kai, I'm giving you a wrench real quick. Can you just do me a favor? Um, all right, Kai, I'm giving you a wrench because I don't think any of my other mods are in. Oh, 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 Christina is still here. Well, whatever, Kai, you can keep it. Um, yeah, there's just been some, uh, some like, comments that are getting caught in the filter just to prove like comments now if it seems like comments that are going to get the uh stream flag then don't um yeah or if you see anybody who's like doxing me or harassing the chat just uh put them on timeout or block them use your best discretion uh anyway um hey honest hans hey days of boyhood hey tps hey guys hey doe eyes okay anyway miss misery gloom um hold on hold on hold on i just wanted to really 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 quick Duchess from, um, here we go. Let's see the MAID. So it's really confusing because he almost made it seem like he was doing it to show. Okay. 
All right. So he said, he, he said, let me, I'm just gonna have to read it because I, I can't, I don't know how to search on, I'll have to figure that out. Duchess Lois of Alberta says the issue, and then he, when did he write this? On 4 30, 2023. The issue about medically assisted assistance in dying is bigger than I am. I am not the first nor the second transsexual person in Canada. Again, what does it mean to call yourself transsexual? I'm, I'm really interested. Because if you're transsexual, then wouldn't Richie be transsexual, right? But it is, or, or the difference is that you identify as one and he doesn't. You know, transsexual implies that you transitioned your sex. And with all due respect, you just simply have a penis that was flayed open and, and pushed up inside of yourself, right? That, that's, that, that's what you did. That's not a vagina, sir. You're not any, you, the fact that you refer to yourself as a transsexual woman, right? And it's also, it's really, again, and it's also so homophobic because it's like, basically, you know, again, it's like, if you're, if you're saying that this is the way to be, you know, truly a woman again, again, you're still saying that there is a blueprint for some men to become women. And this is the way to do it, you know, genitally mutilate. Um, and I don't think Richie identifies as a transsexual woman. And I don't think he would appreciate at this point, you know, the, the presumption that, you know, your special gender identity, which you claim not to have, but you must have one, because if you're saying that this makes you a special transsexual, then everybody who has gotten this surgery is also a transsexual woman. Right. And, you know, like. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, Richie says, I'm truly trans, like the guy at the mall is truly Santa. Exactly. You know, some Santas are more Santa than the other mall Santas. Um, and the truth is, I'm the Santa, because I'm the one who buys the presents. Uh, so he says, anyway, the issue about, so this is a real weird grift, okay? And actually, let's just really quick, hold on, really quick. I'm like trying to stay focused. Lo All right, Duchess Lois. He literally goes by Duchess Lois like when he's like interviewed. Duchess Lo this was one weird grift. One weird grift that he he jumped onto and it's really vile. Um all right. Trans indigenous Canadian slams doctors for denying her euthanasia request. Oh wait here. Wow. Here we go. Mm -mm. Just so you guys can have a quick overview of what he and Eva are apparently, what they're big, you know, important, no offense, but like Anna Slats is like, this is a really important thing. No, no this is actually really creepy. Uh, trans indigenous Canadian slams doctors for denying her euthanasia request saying death again. So he's always like, I don't do preferred pronouns, but you do, you do, because I'm sure these people asked you how you wanted to be referred, right? I'm sure. Or, or if you had any integrity, you would have corrected them. Sure, Richie would have said, no, 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 sorry, it's it's he, him, I'm a man. Okay, no, 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 but you went along with the she, her. So you're appropriating our language. So when we're talking about keeping men out of women's spaces, language is involved in that. And again, I'll say it a million times, the reason why it is so important that we don't do preferred pronouns is because what will happen is it'll start to trans socially transition the definition of the word woman and what that means and entails. And over time, when it's used colloquially enough to mean certain men, they'll eventually change the definition, which has already happened. They change the definition of female. So woman is still adult human female in the dictionary, but female now refers to anybody who is biologically female, who's, you know, uh, has large gametes or somebody who identifies with being a woman, right? So that basically means anybody. So now that we've changed the definition of the word, that means anytime that it appears in law, in legislation, those laws now mean something else. So all of the work that we've done to legislate uh, protections and rights for women are, are basically now undone because you, you guys help usher in the changing of the meaning of the vernacular. That's why we must hold the line on language. Uh, trans indigenous Canadian slams doctors for denying her euthanasia request, saying death would be better than her constant pain from a surgically built vagina, which she later, which he later goes on to say, like, is really not in that much pain. This is clearly 
a, uh, a, an attempt to just get some like attention and sympathy. And it's really gross as far as I'm concerned. And it's like, if you were that serious about like, like self deleting, you wouldn't get getting denied by this wouldn't stop you. Right. And, and of course like, you can sit there and everybody's like, Oh, please don't do it. And Oh, you know, can like sit there and cry at your feet and you can like, sorry, my lips are so chapped right now. I like need to go get some chapstick, but like, and it's like, ew, how fucking disgusting, you know? And it's like, you're, and hold on, look, I just, God, it's really hard to even like wrap my mind around. So he goes, Lois Cardinal says her failed euthanasia bid is a quote, human rights, oh, come on, is a human rights concern. She endures again, and I'm just going to read it as it's written so we can all be enraged together, but you know, uh, she endures pain and pressure from her new vagina, which isn't easily fixed. Uh, an indigenous transgender woman. So again, she, he should have corrected them, right? A, a indigenous transgender woman has slammed Canada's healthcare system for rejecting her euthanasia request. Despite, why does this keep doing this? Um... Sorry, my like, it just, it, my, my firewall is being annoying and weird and it keeps messing with me. Uh, hold on. Aggravating. He also, no offense, and this is, this is an ad hominem and I do apologize in advance, but he talks like Kermit the Frog. It was a little bit, a little funny. Oh, come on, why is it like all the way to the end like that? Anyway, uh, th this is just how the like border is. Let me refresh. I don't know what's going on. This was done July 28th, 2023. So this was this past July. Um, on. Sorry, my computer's been really slow. In, a, in social media posts, Lois Cardinal, a self-proclaimed sterilized First Nations post-op transsexual, said regret over her medical transition, again, because, you know, she went and took all these special steps to, he, it's, he went and took all these spe extra special steps to self-harm, and now he gets the extra special right to call himself a woman. No, that's not how that works. Uh, in social media posts, Lois Cardinal, a self-proclaimed sterilized First Nations post-op transsexual, said regret over her medical transition led her to apply for a lethal injection in January. And for how, like, dramatic these two are and how attentioned, like, starved they are, it's, this is not a surprise. This is very much in character. Cardinal, who lives on a native reserve near near St. Paul, Alberta, posted, and oh, this is another thing too, every single time he brings up being a transsexual woman, I'm a transsexual, and he always says, he claims that he's not a man, but then refers to himself as a woman over here. Every single time he does that, he talks about how he's First Nations, even when it's like not relevant to what's being discussed. It's like, so is your whole shtick just like falling back on identity politics to make your voice what more important? Because of these, like, you know, your proximity to these, like, you know, marginalized groups or your, uh, uh, you know, being a part of certain marginalized groups. Not saying that that's not a relevant part of your life, but it's not relevant to every single time that you need to, like, talk about being a transsexual. It's like you, he quick bundles those all together. And when he refers to himself as a BIPOC uh, trans person, it's so cringe. It's like the DEI, like, on on a bean. Cardinal, who lives on a native reserve near St. Paul, Alberta, posted her medical records from the request online this week to draw attention to radical gender ideology. Her cause underscores the perils of Canada's ultra-liberal health care system, one of the world's most permissive for both. Okay, here's also the weird thing. He basically doesn't make any sense. On the one hand, he claims that he's doing all of this, which if this were the case, I would maybe like see where he's coming from and even possibly co-sign it. On the one hand, he, he acts like he's only trying to sign up so that he can expose how easy it is for people to get uh, into the MAID program for psychiatric reasons and how they can be, you know, get uh, assisted euthanasia. 
and, and expose how it, he basically saying he's like, oh, they're aiding in the genocide of my people. Right. So I'm like, oh, OK, well, that would make more sense if you're trying to see if like, let's show how easy it is to be accepted into the program and then expose it and be like, yeah, I was never actually going to use it. But no, 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 no. Then he constantly talks about how like his mom had to like come and have a talk with him. And it was like, you know, my mom asked me if I'm still thinking about uh, made, you know, thinking about the euthanasia and. I'm an honest person, so I told her that I truly am. He, like, waffles between pretending as if he's, like, trying to expose Canada for having this, like, dangerous policy that is aiding in the genocide of First Nations people, but then is saying that he's seriously pursuing it, and he constantly uses these, like, emotional uh, manipulation where he's like, oh, you know, I'm going to be one dead Indian soon. It's like, ew. How is this any different from from the trans identifying people threatening to self harm if they don't get their way, it's like you're threatening self harm for what clicks and views and and interviews and retweets. Like, I'm sorry, this is despicable. I've seen a lot of really despicable grifts, but when you have Laura Hobbs calling you out as being like unethical, you should re really really take a look at what you're. Let me see if I can. Oh God, if I can find the Laura Hobbs thing. Yeah, even, uh, oh, where is it? Hold on. It's just, <laughs> damn. Damn, let me see. No. Where is it here? Oh, forget it. Forget it. Forget it. Wait, hold on. Hold on. I'll find it on here. I'll just show you guys from here. It's really funny. I was like, damn, that's a bad John. And if you have if <laughs> you have Laura Hobbs being like the voice of reason and like making you look like an like a unethical, like unhinged, like grifter, like he, that's really, really like that that's like something else. <laughs> That's really, really something else. Um, poor Precia. And Precia, again, who actually has some like, integrity. Like, let's hear from her. You know, Richie, who has some integrity. If you don't follow Richie, follow Tulip R. You know, like the Genevieve Gluck, who I still love. You don't hate me. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, wow. Um. Oh boy, let's see. Tony Slayer, True Chance, Dun -dun -dun -dun. Let Drown, This, Time and Energy. I don't know. I guess, I don't know. Whatever. I, I know I, I, I probably like scrolled by it. Let me see. I probably scrolled by it already. 16, Aja the Empress. Um. Um, 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 all right, never mind. Oh, here's another thing, too. It was like they posted this whole thing, and she basically wrote that she's for LGBT rights. That, that it's like, and she blocked me. Hardy Har. Um, if I can find it. Oh, 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 apparently John K. Euler had hit me up to do an interview and I had no idea and it was a long time ago and definitely I want to take him up on it. He is such an important safeguard and whatever, I can't find it, it doesn't matter. Anyway, sorry, I don't want to get too far off track. Okay, so uh, let's see. Huh. I requested my made file in a series of social media, so this is him. In a series of social media posts, Lo Lois Cardinal rails against the transgender ideology that led to her problematic surgery. I requested my made file. So let's take a look at this thing. Um, Damn, they're not actually individual images. It's taking this psychological burden on me. If I'm not able to access proper medical care, I don't want to continue to do this. Cardinal underwent, underwent a vaginoplasty in 2009, but developed complications and re quickly regretted the procedure. She told Daily Mail. So, she spoke, so he spoke to them directly. So, yeah, 
you know, the fact that they referred to him as transgender, the fact that they referred to him as, you know, she, her, he all had a role in. It's not like, oh, they just went and did it. They just picked up the story. Most recipients suffer pain and discomfort afterwards. Uh, pain during intercourse and bladder problems are common. Neovaginas must be dilated regularly to stop them from collapsing. So it just also seems like he does seem to like whine a lot about like not having a sexual partner, which no offense, but straight men want men, women with actual vaginas, right? And it's like, you know, I, yeah, so sorry, <laughs> sorry. He keeps like complaining that he doesn't have, I feel like that's what a lot of this is, is like, poor me. I don't have, you know, uh, there is nobody here who will, um, I don't have a relationship and I'm just, it's like, it just sounds like a lot of like feeling like, you know, whatever, like feel sorry for me, which like we do feel sorry for detransitioners, but you're still a grifter. So it's hard to feel sorry for you. Snap your W2 and file your. God, why is it things I, you know, whatever you guys get the, the gist, right? So then he, they both went on Benjamin Boyce and this was something else. I'm going to play it and I got to go get some, <laughs> I got to go get some chapstick. My lips are killing me. Um, it, it's really, it's really just despicable and how anybody's like co-signing this, this really disgusting grift it is, I don't understand I it, as being like legitimate. And then just listen to how they talk. It's really, really, I think, shameful. Shameful and unethical what they're doing. Mine's an obituary. Oh, God. <laughs> In a good way. I'll find, like, the most sexiest photo I have. Like, okay, and also, like, he's still, again, trying to, like, you know, create, like, a feminized voice, which you can't undo the effect that testosterone has had on your voice. It's a reason why even once women, uh, trans identified females stop taking exogenous, exogenous testosterone, they never get their voice all the way back. Cause once your voice has been and your vocal cords have been exposed, uh, to testosterone and affected by testosterone, you can't undo that. Right. So he likes trying to put on this sort of like fake feminized voice. He literally sounds like Kermit the frog. It's like, uh, <laughs> Sorry, it's like me being petty, but it's really like comical and like cartoony. I mean that. I'll put it at the end. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, thank you. I'll we didn't even do it. introduction, but everyone's. Did you want to do an introduction? Because that saves me time. Oh, we can okay, save right now. Can, I'll put it at the beginning. Your, and then Eva can do hers. And then okay. Mine. Oh, okay. So I'll do. R Richard is another one. Richard, who's in the chat right now, he's another man who went all the way and had, uh, you know, the, the genital, you know, and I like Richard, I'm so sorry. I, and you, Richard and, and Richie and anybody else is in here. And I hate calling it mutilation because I don't want to imply that your body's mutilated and that you're somehow not whole, you know, and, and I only underscore that to, to underscore the seriousness of it, you know, but I don't mean, I, I really genuinely, do not want to like, you know, imply that, that your body's mutilated or, or that, you know, it's ruined or that you're ruined and that, you know, you can never regain a sense of being whole and that you're not whole in who you are right now, you know, and cause like our bodies are something that's so sacred and your body is something that's sacred, you know, and I don't want to put that down or, or distress, like, you know what I mean? And, and I know that that can be really hard, especially for some detransitioners who, who have that, who have that internal, you know, dialogue and are hearing that from other people where it's like, you know, we have to try to underscore how serious these, uh, surgeries are as a cautionary tale for other people. So we're using really strong language of mutilation or ruined and, and all this sort of stuff. And I don't, and I also want to be cautious because I don't want you to internalize that. And I just want you to understand that part of the reason of like using like really strong language like that is so that it can be a cautionary tale to others. But that's not to imply that, you know, that you aren't whole in who you are and that your body's ruined or that it's it's not precious, you know, and it is. And Richard isn't like, again, he's in here now and he's another one. 
who uh, doesn't pretend to be, you know, just because he went through that surgery, the genital surgery as a man, uh, doesn't mean he still pretends to be some sort of a special class of transsexual woman and still try to keep himself in some sort of a victim class, you know, and it's like Lois claims not to have a gender identity, but you, you, you do kind of, if you call yourself a transsexual woman, you know, you, you kind of do have a special gender identity that makes no sense. Um, yeah, it was Carol. Carol is the one, is she in here? Oh, that Carol. The other Carol is the one who brought that up about like the language around saying like, like, you know, detransitioners, people who've undergone these surgeries and talking about their bodies as being like ruined or mutilated. And like, I do want to be thoughtful about that. You know what I mean? And it's like, I know like you guys are so precious to me and it's like, I'm so like proud of, of who you are. And I feel like protective of, of a lot of you guys, especially the ones who have really put yourself out there and been so vulnerable about such a difficult reality that you had gone through and the trauma you've gone through and have really held on to so much integrity while doing so and haven't taken any cheap shortcuts uh, or, or taken these kind of like middle ground kind of bullshit positions, but like who have really stood firm and like, no, I was delusional and, and here's the truth. And I'm really, really like grateful and proud of that. But, uh, hello, uh, hello, and welcome to Conversations with the Voice of Reason. Today's conversants are Eva Kurilova and Lois, the Duchess. Uh, that's her Twitter title. Just a few days ago, Lois expressed her deep discontent with the path of medical transition that she underwent, including hormones and what is colloquially called or euphemistically called bottom surgery, and the persistent issues that she has with man-made simulations of female sex organs, and that the Canadian medical industry is just not serving her well, and that she has now applied to MAIDS, which is Medical Assistance in Dying, which is a voluntary euthanasia program that is going on up in Canada. That tweet that she wrote went rather viral gained a lot of attention, and she was kind enough, along with her friend Eva, to join me to speak more about her reasoning behind deciding to utilize Canada's medical industry to facilitate her checking out. Without further ado, here is Eva and Lois. Yes, hi, I'm just Lois, so I am a sterilized First Nations post-op transsexual woman of 14 years, living in Alberta on Treaty Six territory. Is that good? I don't know. <laughs> That's great. Fabulous. Okay. My Fancy. Turn? Yeah, Eva. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm Eva. Eva Kurlova. You may know me as Canada's preeminent lesbian on Twitter, and I do some writing. And I'm just here as a friend to talk. <laughs> My first encounter with consciousness from another world was when I met someone in 2010 whose most recent past life took place on another planet. I could look into their past life and see and feel their planet through them. It was a fully enlightened world. There was no karma there. Every being was fully embodying their light in form without distortion. Total joy, total peace and resonance. I also remember quite vividly something that happened during a group clearing call I was leading for several thousand light workers in 2017. It was the first time I witnessed a dying world, a world where the lights went out, where all life was wiped out by the decisions made and actions taken. What prompted you to write the tweet, Lois, about... Uh, uh, sorry, let me just see. Of course, was that like going on for a while? My Distant bad. issues. I wanted you guys to have something to listen to YP real fast. But without further ado, here is Eva and Lois. Yes, hi, I'm just Lois. So I am a sterilized First Nations post-op transsexual woman of 14 years mm -hmm. living in Alberta on Treaty 6 territory. Is that good? I don't know. <laughs> That's great. Fabulous. Okay. My Fancy. Turn? Yeah, Eva. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm Eva, Eva Kurlova. You may know me as Canada's preeminent lesbian. On No one knows you as Canada's preeminent lesbian. You just have that in your bio. Like, you don't, you, you, you platform this dude more than, apparently she's been married. She has a wife who she's trying to start a family with. 
They've been together for like upwards of a decade, and ah, you wouldn't know from. It's like, it's like again. I think it's just it's all an attention grab because you get more. You know, you get to stir up the gender criticals and, and the feminists. It's like you're really sacking it to them, Eva. Really sacking it to these feminists fighting for fighting for their rights, you know? Like, cool, bro. Real cool. Like, you don't even post your own wife. Post this dude. It's like, are you bisexuals? Is this what you're into? Or do you, or are you buying into the fact that he's, you're taking, like, the whole, like, Ariel Scarcella route where you're like, hey, if he's post-op, I'll treat it like it's a real vagina. Like, <laughs> Twitter and I do some writing and I'm just here as a friend to talk. <laughs> Why do they kind of look alike? Do they not kind of look alike to, as anybody? They totally do. They both have like, yeah, I don't know. What, what prompted you to write the tweet, Lewis, about uh, accessing medical assistance and dying directly related well, to had, your uh, transition? Well, it had to do with the government's decision, the federal government's decision to look into MAID accessibility for those with mental illness. MAID accessibility for that people? Like, he literally t- talks like Kermit the Frog. Uh, can we just really quick, just so that we have, like, for those who don't know what Kermit the Frog sounds like, just keep this in mind. Hold on, let's... Hold on, let's see. Uh... Does he talk? I miss and one. now for another Muppet Fault of the Week. Dreams are how we figure out where we want to go. Life is how we get there. I'm headed this way. My mistake. It's this way. Huh. <laughs> I love that. I'm sorry, but it's like so, it's like, bro, just use your normal voice. Stop being annoying for like five minutes if that's possible. I'm sorry, but and I'm like really trying to like not go to ad hominem. Someone said, like Eva's face is particularly like just punchable. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I'm really like I really trying to stay like mature about all this, but like it, both of them, I, I really just find like utterly unbearable. And I wasn't a bully in high school, but like if I were, these two, <laughs> like no offense, but like it's just it, no offense, but it's just like clear that like you guys were like annoying and embarrassing for the vast majority of your lives, it, especially Eva comes off as like annoying and embarrassing for like most of her life. And is now has like a little bit of like, you know, always kind of got off on like being annoying, you know, annoying to people. That's like her way to kind of like push back. And it's like, uh, like, I'm sorry, I'm 35 years old. Apparently so are they. And there is a world of difference between, I feel like my emotional development and my social development and my experiences and, and what it seems like they've gone through it's like this extended adolescence vibe especially with eva especially with eva eva seems like especially like annoying and like underdeveloped socially and emotionally as their only condition I'm like, okay. I'm like it's it made me rethink everything and because i was going to access it regardless under that condition but I don't know what that was up, like, uh, what was going on with that, if it's still a go for March 23rd, no, March 17th of this year. I don't know. So then I'm opening my soda. Um, so, yeah, so that happened. But the tipping point for me was last year with trying to access health care in our province. I remember that. Wasn't that when the doctor told you, like, oh, us women, this happens to yes. us? We as women, we know, we as females experience uh, vaginal atrophy. Yeah. And you were like, well, no, that's not, that's not my problem. Exactly. Like, I'm having something else because, like, my dilation hurt. I'm experiencing pain. Like, something's going on. And then it was more, more or less just brushed off. And then I had to do a second dilation in the week. So I was doing it on Sunday and Thursday. I'm like, that's just too much. And then, like, I, well, I can't swim. 
I was just like, it was just way too much for me to do. And the pain wasn't subsiding. So the- your problem was a, what you can't swim. You can't have sex. I think a lot of this is just like the social fallout and it's all just like, woe is me. You, you, he was never going to go through with this. And, and I'm, if he really was serious, you don't sit there and, and like he claims that it's not the same as S U I C I S U I C I D E. You know, it's not the same thing as like self deletion, but it is. It, I don't know what the logic is there. But this whole this is a this is one dark and honestly grotesque grift. Then just one day it just went away. Huh. Oh, good, you're not hurting anymore. No, that was but it was like three months of that. And so because of three months of like pelvic pain, he's now telling everybody that he want he's making this big scene and trying to get on uh what the assisted euthanasia, right? It's like the the medical euthanasia program. Like, come on. This is gross. Like there are a lot of ways, a lot of cheap ways that you can go for an attention grab, but like this is actually next level. Intense pain. Right. And this is something that you'll have to keep doing, right? Is that you'll, like you'll have to keep dilating. You can't just stop. Exactly. I have to do it for the rest of my life because I don't have an intimate partner. And that's another thing that got me mad too. But anyways, I don't have an intimate partner to help with that. And then that other doctor who we, uh, labeled me from homosexual to asexual because I don't have a sexual partner at the moment. I was just thinking, like, why? Because I'm not a whore? <laughs> Wait, why do they need to label you? Why does a doctor do that? I don't that? know. That doctor did that. Huh. At the Lois Hole Women... Wait, Lois... The Lois Hole Hospital for Women's Health. We have a hospital named after... What is it? Lieutenant Governor? General? I don't remember. She was an advocate for women's rights and issues. What is what is the point of Eva being here? Does anyone know? Like, is she like, is it her handler? Or, or is she helping to peddle this dude's story for attention? Like, well, why is she here? Why did why is she like the special like handler of of again, this is why the whole pet troon, is it really that far off? It's like she, she's the handler and here here's my exotic creature. You know, you can come and ask her some questions. What is Eva's point? Do we know what, what the fuck she's doing here? Because I, I haven't figured it out. So they named a hospital after her. What was Hole? And your name About is my Hole. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but that, that hospital was my Hole. I'm like, no problem. Well, it, isn't that... Sorry, I didn't see the Tim Pool thing. So Tim Pool did a video on you. Isn't that something he kind of giggled about? Oh, boy. Uh, Days of Boyhood is another... If anybody else who wants, like, a funny, more, like, lighthearted, gender-critical channel, Days of Boyhood is a really good parody account. Uh, she does a really good parody of the uh, Days of Girlhood. So that's another good one to follow. Also, Kai Decadence, obviously, follow him. He's good, too. Christina Goki, follow her. The lowest well, no, thing. he said it seriously, and I giggled. I'm like, oh, oh okay. Goodness. I couldn't bring myself to watch it. So this is how big the story has gotten, that the stupid Western Standard picked it up, didn't even contact Lois for a comment or a question. Like, like, yeah, they're allowed to write about this, but it's just not, there's no integrity there. Like, where's your journalistic mm-hmm. integrity? So they... Maybe, Eva, because, you know, it's, it, it's like the whole thing where it's like, there, that's why, like, having, like, Phil Illy is actually problematic to have him and come answer questions about himself every time. Because sometimes it's important to analyze people without having that person there to, like, dominate the narrative, right? People can find the artifacts that are around about the story and can kind of, you know, piece together the story themselves and put together artifacts and stuff. And like, yeah, maybe ask for comment. But sometimes it's actually helpful not to have like the person there so that they can sit there and control the narrative. And, 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 and you know, it's like sometimes being objective is is not having them in the way. It's like Phil Illy. We didn't need him in the way. We can, we can, you know, there was like, oh, we need to look at him scientifically. Yeah, you can observe people without having to sit there and let them guide the discussion. 
where you're basically having to like ask them permission to, oh, is this what we should think about it? Or is this like, no, 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 no. You can go to his ex-wife. You can look at, you know, videos that he's posted, look at his writings, analyze all that stuff, observe him, you know, and, and not sit there and, and let him gatekeep the conclusions that are being made. Uh, that, that are serve in their own self-interest. Sometimes that's the purpose of that. Because this is such a bizarre, gross story, honestly. He wrote a stupid story about it. It was badly written. It was just about your tweets. And then Tim Pool retweeted it, and he made a comment, and that brought it to over a million people. And then Tim mm -hmm. Pool also yesterday did like an 11-minute segment on it, you said? I couldn't watch it. I didn't want to watch it. I watched it, yes, 11 minutes and 40 seconds. I watched it. I just kept pausing it. And yeah, everyone's saying that, uh, you know, vaginas are not a hole. And, like, he's trivializing it. But, like, my hole, my hole. It's like, yeah, for, I guess for him it's a front hole. That's who, that's who, like, the term front hole should be applied to, you know. But, no, no, our vaginas have nothing to do. Did they get to the point where uh, boys called him a transsexual woman and he, like, nodded along or, or referred to himself as a transsexual woman? Did I miss that part? cringing and I'm like oh my goodness like so many people are talking about my vagina like settle down <laughs> <laughs> isn't it technically a vagina or no vagina no <laughs> sorry I, I don't we'll have to do a twitter poll yeah he really seems in like such desperate you know pain that he can't even I wanna uh, I need to get his uh, hold on uh, let me see if I can find Let's see. He had. I'm just going to screenshot some of this stuff. Uh, let's see. And again, it would be one thing if he was doing this to expose how easy it is, which is how he, fr it's weird because in some tweets he frames it as if that's what he's doing. His whole purpose is to expose. Um, he says, let's see. Um, yeah, the issue about made, about medically assisted uh in death, it, medical assistance in death is bigger than I am. I am not the first nor the second transsexual person in Canada accessing it. And nor am I the first First Nations person seeking this. I have been having conversations with people from all walks of life, concerned parents whose children are transitioning and that have mental health issues that aren't being addressed. Instead, their children are being affirmed and being pushed as a cure-all. Uh, once a child is being led to believe they will become a real woman capable of giving birth after transitioning fully. Um, let's see. I also see the other side of S-U-I-C-I-D-E and issues with my people, First Nations people. We have some of the highest S-U-I-C-I-D-E's rates of that, of, you know, I guess, what can I, what, S S U I self-deletion? Within Canada, a lot of addictions, mental health, lack of available resources, intergenerational trauma, and next year, uh, medically assistance and dying will include mental illnesses as an eligibility to access it. Like he's acting like he's exposing MAID, but then talking about how he wants to access MAID for those exact criteria that he pretends that he's like trying to expose as being like dangerous and harmful to people, but you're promoting it as like your solution. Bro, like, uh, how how gross can you be? Like, really, how gross are you? I'm concerned, and all I can do is use myself as an example. A cautionary tale, a tragedy, a statistic of systemic ignorance within Canada, and facilitate conversations. It shouldn't be seen as an alternative when there is no proper health care and supports. Bro, and that was the one where, uh, that was the one where, uh, uh, <laughs> Laura Hobbs. <laughs> so funny. Hold on. So Hobbs. This is Hobbs. Here, I actually just retweeted it so we can see it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry. I'm like, I know that I'm off track. But... Where is it? 
Come on. I don't know why. I'm like so dumb at. Oh, here we go. <laughs> if you don't follow me already, you better follow me right now. You better follow me right now on Twitter. ASTFXX. Okay? Follow me now or I will make a stream about you. Just kidding. All right. Anyway, so <laughs> Hobbs. I, I'm sorry. Hobbs cracks me up. I know. I understand that. I fully understand that, that he is absolutely unpalatable. But for some reason, it's like I can't fully take him seriously. And I know he's genuinely a threat to women. He's using women's spaces and stuff. And he's hysterical. But I think he's like so funny. He's just like, he's like a cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, ha even Hobbs goes, so imagine that instead of you getting the word out there and people stop this madness, bad pe pe people twist your story and make what you did the blueprint. And this model is repeated again and again, perhaps massively. To be honest, that is what I will believe will happen if you go through this. And I was like, I basically, what did I say? I was like, uh... I said it's so very obviously an attention grab. And you're right, Hobbs. It's wildly irresponsible on so many levels. He's doing it to generate buzz in a story. Um, yeah, and I just was basically like, it is, you're in bad shape if like Laura Hobbs, if Kami D girl, <laughs> if Kami D girl is like the voice of reason against you, like if Kami D girl actually sounds like a reasonable, like logical, like thoughtful and ethical person. In. like you're in bad shape bro like i would really like step back and like re like this <laughs> hold on is that i actually want these kids to try to get to adulthood and not die i would prefer if they didn't think that they have to transition to uh, i wanted the, the one where he was like flipping out on turfs was like super funny He's just really funny when he gets like, like real mad. Women who, some of them ironically are like cis horns who are in the GC. It's like they have more AGP than I do. Like, I don't even care for vagina like that. <laughs> and some of these gay guys, like, just, this is so much like obsession with like how people are supposed to be. You have like the mass gays getting involved in all of this with their fucking like biological essentialism. You have like, eugenicists trying to tip their hat wait hold on hold on no just just to really like hold on trans flip out popeyes this is <laughs> i'm sorry i know i'm like a bad gc but he really cracks me up and like again again you know like i would i would fight against what he stands for like to my dying day but like i had him on my channel and he was funny and it's like I, I, I had no problem sitting, like, kicking it with him for, like, you know, like, a half an hour before we went. And then afterwards, when we were just talking, he was cracking me up because he's funny. And it's, like, but that's not the same thing as, like, co-signing him and what he's doing. This is, oh, my God, hold on. <laughs> it's really funny. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Damn it. Hold on. I need you guys to see this. Uh, it's, like, every single day, you guys. And this is what I complain about all the time. Look. What's what's his name? What's your name? My name Alex. Is yeah, your name's Alex, and I'm gonna be talking to your manager. This guy called me sir. I certainly like, this did. happens every I day. Everywhere did. I go, I get called sir. I'm I so sir. Why would you call a chick? They got ass. Why would you call? I didn't say. No, stop I like how they blurred him out. They blurred out his. Oh my god, they blur He's wearing a shirt. They still blurred it. I want to do like the non-censored one though. Damn it. Okay. No, sorry guys. I know I need to get back on track. I want to see it with the uncensored. Wait, hold on. Let me see. Laura Hobbs freak out. Hold on. Trans Popeyes freak out. <laughs> really funny. Here, uh, it's like every single day, you guys. And this is what I complain about all the time. Look, what's what's his name? What's your name? My name Alex. Is yeah, your name's Alex, and I'm gonna be talking to your manager. This guy called me sir. I certainly like, This did. happens every fucking day. I certainly Everywhere did. I go, I get called sir. I'm I so fucking sorry. Why would you call a chick big ass tits? Fucking. Why would you call. I didn't say No, stop trying to gaslight trans people and tell us that we're crazy. Crazy. You need to fucking be mindful of other people I didn't and stop being a fucking scumbag, and you're a liar. I heard you. Stop fucking gaslighting trans people. Wait, what? Did you call me sir again? What was that? You said goodnight, sir? 
Alex, I'm going to be talking to the corporate about you, motherfucker. Fuck you. Okay? That's bullshit. You don't fucking harass trans people at work. Hurt. Yeah, you did. And I'm walking out, and you're like, have a good night, sir. That's what the fuck is that? No, you don't fucking do this to trans people. This is discrimination. I didn't say No, this is discrimination. Okay. I'm fucking done with it. No, I'm going to talk to corporate about this. You don't oh harass God. trans people. You hey, you know, it's one of the stupid things you when you're catching so Karens. I didn't even say nothing. You call me sir, and you're talking shit, call me sir. Time, this is did, transphobic harassment. Oh my you're God. a fucking bigot. Oh my God. All right, Alex, you know what? I, I can't wait to just, <laughs> He admits twice calling me sir. No, you lied about the first one. No, you called me sir twice. Twice. Yeah, but you shouldn't be fucking harassing but people I with slurs. It's a slur. Do you not understand? I never you, said sir. It's like if you call the person that color the N word. Don't fucking. You hear what he just said? He just pulled the Exalanzic argument. Man, Exalanzic is starting to uh, uh, horseshoe into TRA every day. He just said it's just like calling uh, a black person the N word. An African or an African American N word, which is exactly the same exact argument that Exelanzic just made about, you know, Lunatune. So yeah, you know, and again, this is my whole thing with like Exelanzic, who's saying that you know the word pet troon is on the same level as pet N word towards Black people during Chattel slavery. It wasn't like she just picked it like you know here in 2024 when Black people actually have like rights and things like that, but it was like. She brought up, you know, from slave narratives. So this is actually when they were, you know, being held as chattel slaves property. And that that's the comparison, which is so vile and vulgar. And it's like, that's the thing. And he said that being called him is tantamount to being called the N-word. And so if you're going to keep that logic that calling these men, again, they, they opted in, and uh, what was it? Karen Davis said, and she's absolutely right. These men opted in to this identity. They can opt out at any time and they could cease being a troon at any time. Black people didn't opt into being black. They didn't opt into slavery. Okay. And again, when we're talking about loony troon, and it's a whole, it's, it's almost like if, if, if Exelanza is going to take that position that it's offensive, then she needs to also take the, uh, agree with the people who said that, um, that Sloth Queen's parody of Dylan Mulvaney is is offensive and bullying and it's hate speech, right? No, no, because the issue was Sloth Queen made a parody of Dylan Mulvaney making a parody of women, okay? And she was calling them out. You know, when we're calling these men troons, which again, when I say, I'm saying it like Looney Troons, which is from Looney Tunes, it's like a trans cartoon. Now people saying there's different contractions. Uh, and so, for some people, they say that the origination is from, you know, trans goon, which they came up with. Apparently that was from trans people came up with it. In, in either case, it's referencing, it, it's referencing the act of mocking and impersonating women, right? If there's no inherent qualities that make someone a troon other than the behavior, the chosen behavior of mocking women. So we're really using that word to to describe and mock a, a pattern of behavior that some men uh, exhibit. We would never call Richie a troon or Richard a troon or Precia a troon. You know, we would never call one of them a troon because they're not troons because they're not behaving in a way that is, you know, uh, delusional and mocking of other people. Right. Just because they're, you know, detransitioners. So again, it has to do with a, a set of behaviors. And if you're going to sit there and take the, um, you know, pet troon is a slur position, which you're welcome to take. But then you also have to agree that calling one of these uh, men a man is also a slur because they say that's a slur, right? They say it's a slur to call him, you know, he, him. They say it's a slur to point out that he's a man. Right. So then if we go that far, then we might as well just have to call them women. We might as well just have to call them, you know, their preferred pronouns. No, it's not tantamount. Women have the right. This is a way that women are protesting by using language that calls out the absurdity of it. They can stop at any time. They can stop at any time. These are men who are in the position of power, being mocked by people who are being oppressed by their behavior. So 
miss me with the bullshit for real. And again, once again, this is the guy, the guy that we're watching in the video. This is Laura Hobbs, who is actually more reasonable and speaking with like reason and integrity against what Lois is doing. Lois, what Lo this is obviously despicable and dangerous behavior against women, what Laura Hobbs is doing. But man, Lois takes it to a new low. You did on the way out. I don't care. But I never. I have the right to be pissed about it. You fucking did. I said I'll lock the door. You fucking did, you liar. And I'm gonna hold you accountable. Cis people need to be held accountable for how they treat trans people. And I'm not gonna put up with this shit anymore. You're crazy, bro. You're fucking. Don't call me fucking. Yeah, but Steph. But I hear you. But so in that logic, then, then, uh, what's it called? Laura Hobbs here needs to be recognized as disabled. Do they get special parking per stickers too? Do they get special, like, you know, what again, why do we need to have special accommodations? The reason why there's an explosion of trans people is because now they're being enabled and promoted, right? All we have to do is stop the enabling and promoting of them and reinstate our boundaries. And a lot of this will go away. And that's how you know that a lot of this is chosen behavior. Because before, when there were firmer boundaries, when there was more shame, when it wasn't being as enabled, this was a very, very, very rare occurrence in society. Now that it's being enabled, it's exploding. So this isn't con behavior that they can't control. They're only acting it out now that they're being allowed to. Now that there's some sort of like, you know, social capital to be earned and gained from it. Bro, stop fucking throwing slurs at me, you fucking throw up your shit, you trans people. And I'm not gonna put up with this shit anymore. You're crazy, bro. You're fucking, don't call me fucking bro. Stop fucking throwing slurs at me, you fucking piece of shit. I'm gonna exist. No, fuck you. I ain't your sis, I ain't your fucking bro. You don't even fucking know me. Oh, you wanna flash gang signs at me? Alright, alright, alright. Yeah, fuck your ass. Oh, suck. Do you wanna talk about sucking dick now? Why is it that you fucking weird since people are so obsessed with sex? You have fucking discrimination going on. And you're afraid it goes to fucking dick sucking. Don't fucking call me sir. This is this is transphobia. Right here on the topic. Yeah, you know, you gotta hurt the last of you. Motherfucker. Fuck you. You even hurt the last. And I like went on like more after that. Hold on. Wait, did they show like. Oh my God. Yeah, it's so, oh yeah, except with these big ass titties. Hold on. Wait, I'm gonna watch this one part. <laughs> but it's like that's bad. It, that's bad. So when you got Hobbs, <laughs> you got Hobbs here being the voice of reason. It is a really bad John. <laughs> really bad John. So let's finish this this despicable, bizarre interview. Oh, yeah, I guess. Oh my god. No, we're 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 playing with Lois Hole. Um so why do you think that there's so much interest in this and what are people getting wrong and what's the correct way that you would have your story read? Well, I want it to be my twin, my pinned tweet where I'm like talking about myself and that they're just jumping to the end, the end result. Yeah, but Steph, right? So Steph says, if my boyfriend beats me to death because he lost control of himself, it's still murder and it doesn't matter if he was disabled mentally when he did it. Do they really lose control and beat their girlfriends to death? Because let me ask you a question. Say there was a police officer or say your father was a police officer and he was home at the time or he was in the other room. You think he would lose control then? Like, we give so much leeway to men to, oh, you know, they lose control. No, they don't. Men know when to abuse women, you know? And it's like, again, it's like, oh, you know, I'm sorry, I blacked out, I lost control. No, 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 because you waited till we were home and I was alone, right? You waited till the door was closed. You didn't do it when we were out at the supermarket earlier. You didn't do it, you know, when my parents were over. You waited till you had me alone. They know when they can get away with stuff. They know when they can get away with stuff, right? Same way that, again, the only time that these men started, you know, doing, you don't see uh, these men doing it in droves in places like Afghanistan or, or wherever else it is where it's like, you know, severely punished. Of course they have control. Of course they have control. Well, like what I'm accessing 
I'm more than just, you know, somebody who's going to die. Yeah, you want to talk about, like, also the, like, First Nations aspect of it, sort of how that relates to uh, First Nations and, like, sterilization and why that's such a big deal. The ongoing sterilization the ongoing. of First Nation people within right. Canada. Oh, thank God we've got Eva here to help kind of, like, steer his narrative. And like, what a weird, what a weird grift. Like, it's out in the open. Everybody knows about this. Like, it's every once in a while, it's in the news. And it's not just the First Nations people that it, it has happened to. It has happened to um, people with disability, with disability in Alberta. I think their lawsuit, their class action lawsuit, started in 2008 and, and that's another thing too it was like so uh biotrans or what was it who said it um oh biotrans liberation that's funny said so add steph do you and steph i'm not picking on you you i love you i think you're a great commenter i'm just challenging you a little bit uh you said at steph do you categorize pedophilia as a disability as well just because i really pushed back on that whole uh you know like excellentic argument um you know, that's the thing, too. And everybody, the whole, everybody's like, what's the matter if they're friends? You know, they can be friends with who they like. And who are we to judge, you know, what people do in their spare time and which paraphilias are, you know, shouldn't preclude friendships. Would we be saying it if this guy was a, a convicted child molester? Would we be granting the same passes? Let me ask you guys a question. Everybody's like, oh, it's okay the AGPs are showing up to uh, safe, you know, women and children safeguarding events. Uh, feminist, gender critical feminist events, you know, well, we, we can't tell them no. And we've got to have debate and discussion. If this were a known convicted child predator, would, would the, would the allowance be the same? Would we be making the same exceptions? Like, come on. Right. What if it was found out that Eva, and I'm not saying that she is, but I'm saying, you know, I just as posing as a hypothetical, if Eva, you know, was found that like, or, or this dude here was found that he was this like hardcore child, you know, R-A-P-I-S-T, right? Would we all be like, hey, it's fine, guys. No, no. You know, these are dangerous paraphilias. Same thing with Phil Illy. They're dangerous paraphilias. You know, by, by not stigmatizing them and putting boundaries around them. Also, here's another thing too. It's like, you know, Eva says, oh, you know, I'm going to honor my friendship with this guy by using his pronouns, which of course she does when they're alone. Of course she does. I know that they don't, they try to like, you know, side sidestep that part, of course. And for all the like, I use, you know, preferred pronouns for my friends and if they're nice trans people. Okay, so you're trying to be nice for them. But is it polite to you? But they don't have to be polite to you in the fact that by for having you use women's language, it degrades you and it puts you in jeopardy of being erased in law. Because once words change, laws change. That's how they change overnight. As the once the word is changed, the meaning of the law is different. Laws are comprised by by words. So when the meaning of those words is different, now the meaning of the law is different. So why is it that we always have to, you know, be polite towards them? But they don't have the same responsibilities to be polite towards the, you know, the woman. There's, he's always the one in control. If he was truly your friend, he wouldn't hold you to a standard and then expect you to, to degrade and disrespect your own language. In 2018 or 19, for those with, uh, that were coerced and forced into sterilization because of a disability. It mostly impacted those with Down syndrome yeah. within our province. Okay. So your government has systemically, uh, chemically castrated uh, undesirables. Is that the exactly. proper term? Mm -hmm. Okay. Including uh, First Nations uh, natives and uh, Down syndromes and other people with mental uh, illnesses, disorders, or mm -hmm. uh, handicaps. Um, and how does that tie to you voluntarily... Uh, transitioning yourself what's the what's the connection there between and is that happening well, is that prevalent is transition being put upon the first and the whole like disabled thing and disabled what is he unable to do what stop impersonating women it's just 
such a compulsion. He's got no control over it. His hands start to move as he puts on women's clothing. Stop it. Stop it. What an absurd thing. First Nation people. Yes. There's yes. a doctor in BC with what over 400 uh, Indigenous children that were in foster care. Yeah, because they're overrepresented in foster care. And he brags mm -hmm. about how he transitions kids in foster care. So you know a lot of them are indigenous. Oh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jesus. And then well, even, just like in Calgary Zone with the Metagender Clinic that accepts referrals from uh, school counselors. Hold on, I don't get one of the hospital. Stuff. It was inpatient psychiatry. That's where we went. It was just... You guys have another program Sorry. you guys do. There was one. Did you guys hear the part where I think it was Benjamin Boyce referred to him as a trans woman? So he does use our language. He calls himself a woman. Where is it? I, I need to find To do and I'll go for March 23rd. No, March 17th. Okay, wait, let me put on year. the closed captions. I don't know. So then I'm opening my soda. Um, I wonder if he has. So, the, uh, yeah, so that happened, but. The tipping point for me was last year with trying to access health care in our province. I remember that. Wasn't that when the doctor told you, like, oh, us women, this happens to yes. us? We as women, we know, we as females experience we as females. Uh, Damn it. Hold on. vaginal atrophy. Trans yeah, and you were like, well, no, that's not, that's not my problem. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Like right, here. Right, here, right here, right here, right here, right here. My dilation. All right, look at this. That she wrote went rather viral, gained a lot of attention, and she was kind enough, along with her friend, Eva, to join me to speak more about her reasoning behind deception. So he does use our language. So he, he, he always, again, he's a liar. He's like, oh, I don't call myself a woman. I am a man. No, no, no. No, you're, you're referring to yourself as she, her. Getting to utilize Canada's medical industry to facilitate her checking out. Without further ado, here is Eva and Lois. Yes, hi, I'm just Lois. So I am a sterilized First Nations post-op transsexual woman of 14 years living in... I am a... I'm just Lois. I'm a sterilized First Nations post-op transsexual woman of 14 years. Like, so, so you're a man. I'm a transsexual woman. So you're a trans... No, you know, you're not transsexual. Because transsexual means that you transitioned your sex, which you didn't. You did none of that. You have a gender identity, which is why you still call yourself she, her. And you still refer to yourself as a woman. I'm a, fur, a sterilized First Nations post-op transsexual woman. You're none of those things. You're absolutely none of those things. Um, and then, uh, hold on for one second. Um, let's see. Hold on. Mm -mm. And then, let's see. Hold on. Let's see. Mm, it's like all this like nonsense. Accepting and overcoming Greek rat, what was it? Well, I have like, okay, so I did some meditation. I did uh, DBT. I did EMDR. EMDR helped me a lot with guided meditations afterward to allow myself to forgive myself for what, of, of how I treated myself during that process post-ops in, in our country? What kind of health care are they receiving? It's not just myself, it's just... So he, he's an advocate. Than me, but then it's like, well, okay, well, I'm experiencing this within my province. You're calling yourself a transsexual and then you're talking about advocating, you're advocating for the rights of these so-called transsexuals, which is such a misnomer. And then you're talking, you're saying that you don't call yourself trans, but you, you do call yourself trans. You call yourself a transsexual. That is trans. Trans is just a shorthand. Um, God, I want, hold on. I, I got a really quick, I just don't want him to, uh, I don't want him to block me. Let's see. Um, yeah, let's see if I can, hold on. Let's see. I want to read some of these tweets. It's like they're kind of getting off the topic and they're not talking about anything. Um, 
He said, okay, here we go. He said, I'm pretty much a transsexual elder with being 15 years post-op. When I joined this discourse, the, idiot, uh, the idiocy of trans ideologies, it felt like I came out of retirement. Let's see. Um, uh, yeah, hi, Jack. I'm an actual bona fide, authentic transsexual. He always says, as a, his, whole, his whole opening line is shtick is, as a sterilized First Nations post-op transsexual. What, what, why, what, what does that have to do with some of the points you go on to make about trans stuff? Um, uh, let's see. We should discuss made. Again, when I say made, we're talking about the euthanasia. So I'll just say euthanasia. Well, we should discuss euthanasia. I qualify for it and I'm currently filed a human rights complaint over it. Context, I'm a sterilized First Nations post-op transsexual with pain and suffering from vaginoplasty. Now, this is a grift. He even said that his pain only lasted three months. Um, let's see. Uh... Yeah, it's like all of this kind of stuff. Oh, Lord. Um, trans about, okay, um, let's see. I'm not trans. Let's see. Since TRA is emotional blackmail when it comes to trans identified individuals and ideations, know that those are... Uh, that there is support for those experiencing those thoughts as a transsexual. I want you to be safe with self. He's always, he always mentions the fact as a sterilized first nations post-op transsexual, but then he talks about how like, you know, then he, he, oh, he literally says, where is it? Um, he doesn't like when people like weaponizing, uh, Yeah, he says, hello, Oscar Baker. My name is Lois Cardinal. I'm a sterilized First Nations post-op transsexual of Treaty 6, Alberta. The issue is very complex, and we should not use an indigeneity as a shield when talking about gender identity and gender expression. The historical issues should be learned from and not, and not added to. So he's basically saying that like identity shouldn't be like a shield, yet, yet you mention it constantly, constantly, for stuff that it doesn't even like... It's not even relevant. Um, I, I'm a real bona fide post-op transsexual. So no. What does that mean? What's a real bona fide post-op transsexual? Look, he says, okay, somebody says, uh, mm -mm. all right. So he says, uh, he, he challenges some TRA and he says, define trans women. Someone says a biological man who has a female brain and looks like a woman. And he says, ha ha, it doesn't work like that. The other person says, yes, it works. And, and Lois says, ha, no, it doesn't. So we are only counting the authentic transsexuals who have undergone SRS. And then someone says, no, SRS is just a surgery. Anyone can go through it. Unfortunately, they are not stricter about it. Being a trans woman is something you were born with. It is biological. And then Lois says, it is a mental disorder, DID. Uh, and then the other person says, so being gay is too. And then he, Lois goes, so why do people always make that comparison? Are you that homophobic? And he said, I am not. Are you transphobic? The fact that you call yourself a woman. So you're acting like you don't have this special, it's like none of it makes sense. It's speaking out of both sides of his mouth. It's so that he can infiltrate and pretend to be gender critical and get special points. When really the only people he's advocating for are other transsexuals. That's his priority. And apparently it's Eva's too. Would you feel safe in a men's cell? I'm a law abiding a citizen. Do you commit? See, oh, he sidestepped. Of course he sidestepped the question, right? Somebody said, look, somebody said, uh, would you feel safe in a men's prison cell? He said, I'm a law abiding citizen. Do you plan on committing crimes? That's disgusting. As if there aren't people who aren't falsely uh, accused of committing crimes all the time. There are plenty of women who are rotting their lives away in prison because they stood up for themselves against an abuser. How that that is a really, really naive thing to just assume that you, the only people who get locked up, the only people who, you know, are, are people who are guilty of committing crimes. Also, your whole, a lot of people are held in prison after being accused of crimes, even before they're convicted. 
So yeah, no, they'd still have to pick somewhere for you to go. You didn't answer the question, which means he would probably advocate to be in a woman's prison. Let's be so for real. Uh, mm -mm. He said no, but many, okay, good. Yeah, the, the person even, even like these TRAs are more logical than him. No, but many innocent people are arrested and there are many crimes without victims. Uh, read this. And he's like doing the keep prison single sex. <laughs> Answer the question. Uh, he says a man who uses transgenda for self-benefit. And he says, uh, this is why we must ensure that we keep prison single sex. But you claim that you're a transsexual. So since you transitioned your sex, then you probably would demand to be in a uh, prison cell. Unless you want to stop calling yourself a transsexual. Because you're not making any sense. Any linguistic sense. You're not being consistent. You can't call yourself a transsexual while still acknowledging that you're a biological male. You, whatever it is that you modified your penis to be, has nothing to do with your sex. Your sex is still the same. You're not trans. Uh, and he, you know, let's see. And he doesn't answer the question. He doesn't answer the question. Let's see. Dun, 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 dun. Now. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I feel like I, uh. Let's see. Yeah, I was, tr oh, he said he's, somebody said, uh, how long were you transsexual and how long ago was the surgery? And he said, Lois said 14 years ago, I was transsexual after SRS. Again, so he's saying that the only way to be a true bona fide transsexual is to going, uh, uh, the so-called, you know, sex, re it's not even sex reassignment. It's genital impersonation, impersonation surgery. Right. That's what it is. You're trying to genitally impersonate the other sex. Um, but that's what makes you a transsexual. So you're saying so you're basically laying a blueprint that the only way to be truly trans, a true trans, because you call yourself trans. The only way to really be the true bona fide transsexual, a.k.a. true trans, is to go and get these horrific surgeries. Tell me how, how exactly is that supposed to be discouraging people from it? Because then what you went and did this like assisted self-deletion grift and and this is what our our feminist heroes eva who's apparently this very effective and i'm sorry anna like slats you're saying oh you know she's one of our most effective people yeah because she's playing both sides we could all be effective if we were teaming up with tras and, and, and you know taking cheap uh making like cheap decisions but no yeah it's a lot harder when you're when you have some like ethics and integrity and you're really trying to hold the line it's harder to make friends that way when you won't sell out your ethics just to you know make some political alliances oh and let's not forget hold on let me get the uh this one's important hold on um let's see the the uh Oh, here we go. This one's important. Hopefully he doesn't. Uh, here we go. Here we have Eva hanging out with some sex clowns, some misogynistic men who, um, yeah, participate in extremely offensive, degrading, uh, you know, cartoonish, trunish, one might say, depictions of women. This is, this is, yeah, this is who they're hanging out with. There's Eva in the middle and there's her little, you know, one might even say pet troon in the middle. And then, oh, look at these very savory people. These are our feminist heroes. Wow. Wow. That's a really, you know, like not offensive representation of women. Wow. 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 Oh, very, very nice. Oh, and there's Eva doubling, tripling, quadrupling down, quadrupling down. Okay, but I'm sorry, any man who's saying that he wants to be per be perceived as a woman is not honest. So 877 says uh, Swiss Miss, most honest thing would be to say I'm a woman who likes to per be perceived as a man, but I'm not and can't cope well with that. For example, Buck. 
Yeah, and, and, and get the help that you need and stop being in the public eye with it and, and just stop, you know, like, like, just try to get off of it. Like, there's nothing honest about wanting to represent yourself as the opposite sex. There's some sort of social benefit that you get, and, and it's, it's, it's weird. And then really quick, let's just grab, um, hold on. Yeah, let's just really fast see if we can get his me oh and then i just you know it was my kids are about to come in just because it's important really 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 fast get um let's see the um uh, oops okay here we go i'll just repost it real fast so it's easy for me to find all right, let me refresh. Okay, and so really fast, this was the whole Sierra thing that was just, everybody was like, bro, what in the fuck are you talking about? The post is unavailable. Ah, I can see it on mine. Damn it. All right, well. All right, so let's see. Yeah, it's, okay. And again, she, she didn't say that it was the, uh, you know, the term pet troon that didn't sit well with her. She said uh, the other reason that the pet troon discourse, the discourse around it just doesn't sit right with me. And she taught, you know, shows from slave narratives comparing it to. God dang it. Sorry, you guys can't see it, but you, you, you feel me. Right. And so finally, I think she finally did delete it because it was so absurd. She got like ratio heavy. Um, <laughs> that might be the, the <laughs> Caitlin's that what a degree from Berkeley does to a motherfucker. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, I said, I'm sorry. What did I say? Oh, she said the comparison was between two slurs, which are homo homologous, homologous. I'm sorry. I'm like, can't pronounce that word on their face, which is like the opposite of analogous. It was not a comparison between experiences. Uh, per your original statement, the, compar you, the comparison is discourse surrounding both, not terminology. Um, yeah, a lot of people are like, what the fuck? And a lot of, you know, black women are like, no, 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 no. This was terrible. Um, let's see. And so, hold on. Really fast. It's a shame because what I guess all of the uh, oh, hold on. Yeah, someone says I'm fucking begging you to delete this, and she said no. <laughs> uh, okay, and then hold on. Let's see, veteran. Sorry, guys. I'm just trying to. Um... Oh, yeah, here we go. What a ridiculous false comparison. Uh... No, at one point, she said, You're entitled that to that opinion. I said, So my response is, What a ridiculous false comparison. There was like. And I always said, it's epic because the one person that co-signed, you know, Sierra saying that was Eva. So it's again, it's like they like teamed up just to like, you know, cool. Um, mm -mm. I said, no, men parading around their fetish and infiltrating women's movement to safeguard women and children is not. Oh, let me see if I can uh, really fast. And then we'll get off of it. Let me see. Da -da -da. All right. So you're entitled to that uh, opinion, but linguistically they're cousins. So hearing one makes me, again, somebody said it and it's so true. It was really just a maneuver to put, to go from being on the defensive about the whole like Phil Illy thing to then going on the, you know, offensive and, and claiming that, you know, and, and trying to like use basically claims of racism you know, and, and these emotional, like these just cheap emotional maneuvers to, uh, reframe like, you know, women's protest language, which I just think is, is no. 
I'm sorry, not not from a leading feminist voice. I said, no, men parading around their fetish and infiltrating women's movement to safeguard women and children is not tantamount to chattel slaves, shaking my effing head. I would have been, I, I've been happy to disagree, agree to disagree on quite a few things, but this comparison is frankly shameful. She said, I don't like this normalization of public use of derogatory slurs for a group that includes people you don't hate and talk regularly to yourself. Again, the slur is directed at the behavior not at the individual themselves. As soon as they stop the behavior, it no longer applies to them. It's literally that simple. Um, let's see. Um, Yeah, Feather Duster says, I, I enjoy arguing with word salads and that keeps me from ever having to eat mine. Yeah, absolutely. Like she will, she'll purposely like talk like in circles around people for no reason. Um, yeah, Sasha says, do you not see how this could be considered racially insensitive? No, no, she doesn't. Um, mm -mm. Let's see. Um, women engaging in histrionic. Okay, hold on. Let's see. And then one last thing. The one thing that was made regarding, uh, if you haven't already, watch our pet troon or listen to the pet troon uh, space. I'm going to try and. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Sorry, guys. Um, and I'm going to have to go in one minute here. Uh, I just want to see the Rev Femme. So she got mad because Rev Femme, so Jen Thomas had basically brought up Exolanzic in my, uh, <clears throat> in my space and was like, it's just a waste of time. Like the whole Phil Illy thing. And it is, it's like rather doubling and tripling, quadrupling down what like women, like, you know, Eva Korolova and, and Sierra are doing are just draining women of their energy and emotional resources. That's all that they're doing. And they're doing it for the benefit of these men. And, and you, we got to see that for what it is. We got to see that for what it is. So she said, and this is where this all came because again, Jen went on and was basically, basically called that out. Was like, we wasted so much time going back and forth, you know, between Karen and Exolanzic when Exolanzic is, is just doing everything she can to pretend like she doesn't understand. And it's just draining of people of their energy, resources, and time. And that's what, that's what these women who play devil's advocate are doing, right? So if you're calling for people to be shunned who have not yourself cut off contact with what exactly, she didn't call for people to be shunned. She said we shouldn't engage with this sort of thing. She wasn't, she never said that you should be shunned. And you know that. And I'm sorry, there's a lot of like, she basically, like, what, let's see if it says, no. At about 15, 150. Let's see. Oh, here we go. Let's see if I can. Now, starting. Let's see. Uh, I'll, I'll let people I'll continue want... to come in. Okay. So, for those of, well, it seems like I'm counting what you or what the other people are saying about, you know, but at the same time, I, th oh, I hear you. And I think that that is something that we should, you know, figure out who are the people I can trust who are really figure out who are the people like amazing. is going to be a live stream. Amazing. is going to be a live stream. I hope anybody out what a pervert is, out what a pervert okay, is. Okay, here we go. And believe, figure out who are the people I can trust getting as much attention. Who is serious about whole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I miss you. Hey, what's up? What's up? So, I mean, I, I hear you, Maureen. It's like, you don't want to, you don't want to be rude unnecessarily, but like, I mean, the Bye, best Christina. way to deal with it is to just ignore them. You know, um, that, that's really my approach since the AGP gate has been like, wow, we, the ones that act like we know, right. We're acting like we know our shit. We can't even get rid of the AGPs and we're supposed to teach the world, right. How to do it. And we can't do it because, you know, we got, you know, what we have, the problem is not, we can identify AGPs all day. It's the AGP adjacents that fight for them. And really what they're doing is taking our time. 
they're stealing our fucking time and they're all they're all over the place and you know like i haven't even been on twitter but i talked to people on the phone and they told me some bullshit that was going down with karen and excellent six you know what i'm naming names because i don't give a shit we have to shun these people okay excellent this is jennifer thomas jennifer thomas who is going to be on my channel on monday and to talk about this more and sick should have been shunned at the agp gate door okay the gateway the agp gateway oh so she did call for her to be shunned. right she defended agps you know and then kind of went after people and took up a lot of fucking time and i don't know what her reasons are you know and maybe she'll have a come to jesus moment i don't fucking know that's all I know is she takes up our time and we should be working on more. We deserve, first of all, qu better quality, better quality use of our time. Better quality and leaders. we also, um, you know, we're serious. We're doing important things. So arguing with people that can't figure out what a pervert is. And believe me, everybody knows. Everybody knows what a pervert is instantly. And that's the same thing with the public that doesn't. Yeah, know so she's right. It, it, they're going to just sit there and waste people's time and play games and and, and, and trivialize this. It, it, it is. It's a fucking waste of time and it's stupid. And so this is what the uh, the whole response is in regards to. Right. It's this. So again, she she popped out with her own AGP gate photo once the other one was going mega viral and it was really just to jump in on the attention. My thoughts on AGP gate. The bigger red uh the bigger red flags and quote man in a dress for me were style of dress and the fit. The inferences and judgments I drew from that were extensive, like I guess trying to be funny. Two, despite one, I just met Phil Autoguy and I feel I had to tag him in, make sure we all know, and didn't know his general vibe or character. I know Shapeshifter, for instance, generally has the electric neon forest creature vibe going on. And that's something we can discuss too. And I I want to talk to Kai a little bit about that when he comes. Kai Decadence uh is gonna be on Friday. Can not wait to have that conversation. I know that that look is part of a recognizable social media persona, so it made sense he would look like himself, his internet persona, in his in, in real life Twitter event. I thought about wearing a colorful wig for the same reason. A lot of people thought they recognized me, but weren't sure since I was wearing a suit with no obvious Exelanzic costume. I mean... I didn't. I don't know if Phil was wearing a costume to be recognized or established to recognize. So she, now she's giving him like like justifications as to why he pulled his shtick. Uh, a recognizable brand. He did state that being known as an AGP to be a resource for other AGPs was part of the intention, which some may be seen as bad and others may be seen as a good thing, depending on their judgments of Phil and their mental model. Again, this Phil is this very dangerous fetishist who targets grooms and harms women and, and, and there's so much more to him and he's he's you know allegedly addicted to methamphetamine and does a lot of really vile things um and, and he's being enabled and paraded around Phil and I turned three. Phil and I turned out to have some common cultural experiences as festival ravers, and we're compiling an outfit on site from the donation table without regard to gender or whether it technically is clo whether it technically is clothing is normal. People without that exposure may overpathologize a behavior that's accepted and reinforced within a subculture. So he's trying. She's trying to pretend that Phil acting this out is is part of being in a raver subculture. Or what the fuck are you? I'm sorry. What are you talking about? It's just like it's like you the weird mental gymnastics to go just to like again because it was because Benjamin Boyce and everybody else took the side of Phil Illy. So again, those were you know she was right off the heels of like kind of feeling like she was finally on the in group with all the cool GCs and now I had to go bend over backwards to make these weird justifications for this. Um. Let's see, uh, which is similar to treating a religious belief as a sign. So, so she's saying that we're over pathologizing his behavior, which is similar to treating a religious belief as a sign of a delusional disorder. Come the fuck on. I'm sorry, come the fuck on. No, no, you, Jennifer's right. If this is like how you're going to gaslight women, we, everybody was right, by the way. Let, let's read again. It's like, Phil is a preferred topic kind of person. And uh, one reason I went to Solejo's famous cis, cisgender heterosexual costume myself, 
uh, was to minimize such social judgments from others, given that it's a work setting where first impressions are being made between people of diverse backgrounds who might turn around and call you out on social media. Meeting you all is a bit like real, again, here's the picture, by the way. We had to make sure to show off the, hey, by the way, I got one too. I got one too. Come check it out. Jen Specht is in a safe space. There's very few circumstances in life that I can imagine being less emotionally safe or predictable than a work conference on a topic that's full of infighting, negative publicity, and severely deranged fan behavior, such as contacting or threatening family members of targeted individuals. Yeah, I mean, that, that shit's all weird, and I agree that that shit's all weird. She is right there. Um, our events are very often protested by or threatened by literal mobs. I didn't come to these events to hold my trauma responses, but I have asked organizers to make reasonable accommodations in advance. What if any reasonable accommodations might everyone feel and people triggered by Phil included be able to make reasonably accommodate everyone's rights and needs at the next event? It's a conversation worth that. Okay. Yeah. Great. great. Okay. So this, Oh, so, so everyone's being hysterical, right? So since it's so hysterical, Let's hear a little bit more about, you know, we're over pathologizing Phil's benign behavior. Okay. Up, oh, I got to go. My kids are here. Damn it. Until next time, guys. I'll see you later.